We welcome you to the fifth T20 international between the USA and Canada. Cricket's longest standing rivalry. Unfortunately, it's the final time these two teams will meet in the series before the T20 World Cup. Aaron Jones, new captain today for the USA. Sad Bin Zafar has been here. And legendary fast bowler Rayon King from the West Indies is here as well. Who's got the coin? Aaron. Heads is the call. It's a head. Sad you've won the toss. If you could just come forward for me. Sad you've won the toss. What will we be doing and why? Uh, we're going to bat first. I think it's a good wicket. Not going to change much. So we just want to put runs on the board and try to defend it. What did your opener show you yesterday that you want to employ in this game? Well, uh, you know, we did have a good partnership, but uh, I just feel like uh, the the, uh, the over, overall run rate was could have still been better. Uh, so we just uh, we talk about it like keeping wicket in, wicket in hand so that we can accelerate at the right time. Hopefully, we try to execute it and uh, you know take the game uh, with the good runs to defend. All right, and just in terms of with the ball, what needs to improve today? Uh, it's just the line and length, basically. You know, we have spoken about it. Uh, it's game after game, so it's kind of like uh, hard for the bowlers as well to, you know, like uh, not worry too much about what happened and, and stay in present. So hopefully, we'll try to do that, execute a line and length better this today. Any changes? One change, Srimanta comes in for sure. Yes. All right, all the best. Thank you. So we we'll get Aaron Jones now. Aaron, lost a toss. What would you have done? Um, I wanted to bowl as well. I think um, bowling first in the morning is actually you get a little, a little advantage. Um, but looking at the wicket is a pretty good wicket, and um, I think bowling or batting first, we just got to come hard, to be honest. Now tell me about your team, because you're a new captain. What other changes have you guys made? How many? We made four changes today. Um, some of the guys have a little niggle, and um, obviously um, we basically won the series already, so we want to see some other guys getting an opportunity as well. What does it mean to you to lead the USA? It's a great honor to lead my country. Um, I think it's a... It's a really important thing for me. Playing over the last couple of years, I've been vice captain as well. So it's good for me to lead today and, you know, get in a position of power today to see how I lead the troops. All right, we'll go well today. Thank you so much. Right, well, we've heard from the captains. The news from the middle, though, is that Canada have won the toss and they will be batting first. So we want to welcome you to Prairie View, Texas, fifth T20 International, USA Canada going at it again. With the news, the US boys have done well, 3 0 in the series so far. I'm joined by Brian Walters and Brian. The Canadians have won the toss, electing to bat Joe uh, Johnson and Richard Ratney, it appears, out in the middle. Can the Canadians salvage some bit of pride in the series? Morning, Lenny. Morning, all. They definitely have nothing to play for but pride. This is what you would refer to ordinarily as a dead rubber. But dead rubbers don't really mean anything because all of this, remember, is in preparation for the World Cup later on this summer. The opening match of the World Cup in Grand Prairie between these two teams. And as has been said a number of times, these two teams are the two oldest combatants in the history of cricket, really in the history of sports. So first ball now to be bowled by Saab Netravalkar. Be interesting to see how it goes to the imperious Aaron Johnson. Things are on the way here. Single into yeah, yeah, the outside and Johnson and the Canadians, they're off and running. They need to really play a good game here, Brian, with the news that the one, US have dominated the one, series. Right? We've seen some strong performance. Yes, not, please. The likes of Mona Patel, Andres House, he's Thanks back up. in the side. Thanks and up, and Brian will Thanks take up. a walk through of the selections of the team for today's game. Looking at the U.S. side, you mentioned Andreas Faust is back in the side with the gloves on. Love to see that a couple of names who have not been in the lineup so far this year or so far in the series are, are playing now. Referring specifically, to, oh, we'll get back to that after this ball. So Richard Ratney gets off the mark. So looking specifically at players like Jesse Singh, Milin Kumar, and Stephen Taylor, who've all sat out. And uh, so the captain himself, Monang Patel, is sitting out. Aaron Jones standing in as captain. And then you have Corey Anderson, who played his first game yesterday, playing again today. Gajanan Singh returns to the lineup. And then the name Nitish Kumar might sound familiar to those of you who are Canadian fans. Nitish Kumar, a former Canadian international, now on the field for the US. 
And then puts minor peak from right here in Houston. Also makes his debut in the series. So Johnson goes big into the onside. That's a good looking shot. A lot of height on the ball. And look at that. It goes a few bounces and it goes a little four. So the first boundary of this match comes of the attacking. Aaron Johnson and the Canadians are up to six for no loss. Aaron Johnson, very attacking. And you'll always see that if you get too straight to him, this gives you a good look and plants that front foot. Not much threat in that delivery in terms of whether or not it would have been leg before wicket because left arm over angle means that it's pitching outside the line of leg stump. And so no risk in that shot. Just going through, lofting it into the deep mid-wicket area for his first boundary of the day. So this one driven into the offside. Beats the man at cover. And a more elegant looking shot from Aaron Johnson. And the Canadians are flying in the first over. 12 runs on the board already. Aaron Johnson, we talked earlier in the series about how imperious he is playing on the leg side. But this is a proper classic off drive. Look at this delivery on the, just outside off stump, maybe a fourth stump line. And perfectly timed front foot drive, front foot right to the pitch. And driving it in that gap just wide up mid off. Racing away through the past that diving fielder at mid-off going away from a boundary. I think you've seen so far, Lenny, that when Aaron Johnson goes well at the top of the order, Canada is a much more dangerous team. So something to look for as you prepare to see what the team is going to look like the rest of the way in this series, but more specifically for in preparation for the World Cup. So they're off to a quick start. We've seen 12 already on the board. We've seen a couple of big strikes from Aaron Johnson. And not too many time, Brian Walters. You'll see that Trafalgar will be roughed up. But Aaron Johnson, he's a quality player, good international star out of Canada. And he is regarded probably one of the best in this team, in this present Canadian team at the moment. Interestingly, you've seen Saab Netraval could do this a couple of times. As soon as, if he gets hit, he immediately switches to go around the wicket, to slant the ball into the left, uh, into the right-hander. It's going to be interesting to see, though, because his line has to be spot on. If his line isn't spot on, then he can score very heavily on the leg side, Aaron Johnson. So the first over comes to a close. It's 12 without loss. Canada have won the toss, and they've decided to bat. So 12th at the end of the first over, Ryan. And Canada off to a very good start, having won the toss, electing to bat. We've seen left arm spin as usual, as we've seen a, a lot of left arm spin bold for this US team as Kenjike comes into the attack. As Kenjike has opened the bowling, in fact, this pair has opened the bowling every match this, uh, this series. Nas Kenjige, tremendous bowler, you know of his capabilities, and he's very, very accurate. More to the point, his accuracy means that you can always feel free to bring him on inside the power play, because he tremendous on the, in terms of getting the right line and the right length. Of course, always more risky to do that inside the power play, but he's proven to be able to do that so far. You look at Vijaratne, Brian Walters, he's come back into the opening position. We saw in the last game they've used Dilpreet Bajwa, who got a 50, by the way, yesterday. Mm -hmm. But they're back to the original start of the tournament. Hey! Vijaratne is only been able to muster 9 and 0 in two matches. So he badly needs a score. Vijaratne, I think, has looked maybe slightly less than uh, his capability is better than what he's produced so far and in the last match that he played which was the third match of the series uh, got out without scoring was dropped for the next match and then back into the lineup so I think he might have something to prove today I think you'll see him hopefully 
from his standpoint, take the bull by the horns and show what he's capable of. So Johnson comes into strike. Uh, cut away into the backward point area. We'll pick up runs here. Ball officially into the offside, and Johnson has picked up another boundary. Aaron Johnson, of course, very aggressive, going at that ball hard, getting a thick top edge, and that ball flying away. There you see on the replay, it's how hard he goes at that that makes it a safe shot. In other words, cricket is a game, Lenny, that sometimes rewards aggression. Had he played that with a little softer, with softer hands, that might have just gone to that fielder short third. If he does get enough bat on it to go away for four. So, Brian, we've seen Johnson in this series, 16, 74, and 1. We saw yesterday he was one of Harmeet Singh's four victims. And in the other two matches, one he was dismissed by Netra Valka, and then another one he was dismissed by Ken Jige. Vijaratne comes in to strike, and the Canadians off to a very good start. They're up on 18 at the moment. Ball cut away into the offside. That's a lovely shot from Vijaratne. Will run across the south field. And another boundary, this time off the bat of Vijaratne, and the Canadians are flying. That's what you want to see more from Vijaratne, cashing in on any opportunities to score. This one just a touch too wide. In fact, again, I take that back. My apologies. That was actually slanting in toward the leg stump, but he backed away and made it effectively into a wide ball, cashing in on that delivery, scoring through the offside. So better ball come advancing down the track could be led by here the second over comes to a close it's 23 without loss a single to Vijaratne and two gone 23 without loss So the Canadians are going at 11 and a half runs and over, Brian. They're off to a very good start, and they'll need to salvage some bit of pride, and they'll need to win this game. Certainly need to salvage pride, and again, you're playing for pride for the fact that, again, these two oldest combatants locked horns again here. The series has already been decided, but you certainly want to put something on the board in the win column. So Netra Valka trying to go funky there is Vijaratne <laughs> and the ball goes through to the new USA wicket keeper Andres House. Looking for the scoop, you understand why he was doing that because deep backward square leg is in position, that's Chad Levan Skalfik, but had that ball gone fine, which is where he was aiming, it would have raced away to deep fine leg for a boundary. And so pay attention here because Canada might be in the position where they're looking to be innovative. Don't have anything to lose. Series has already been decided. So you're looking for different ways that you can make your presence felt. So Richard Ratney not timed well into the offside. The fielding of the U.S. team, in addition to their bowling and batting, Brian, has really been spot on. Not too many incidents, quote unquote, in the field. And to my knowledge, and I've been here except one game, I haven't seen a drop catch from the U.S. team. There have been a couple of harsh drop catches. I can think of uh, an absolutely ripping straight drive that went back to Harmeet Singh that he was not able to hold on to in, in the third match. But apart from that, the, the Americans have basically fielded and caught really well in this entire series. You look at Vijaratne, Vijaratne has not, we, we made mention in a couple of games that he has played, he's, he's got nine, got out, of, got out to the bowling of Ken Jige, and then we, we saw he got a duck off the bowling of the man bowling now, Natra Valka, so he struggled in this series in two games. And we saw yesterday that uh, they've experimented with Bajwa, that went pretty well. And you get the feeling that Bajwa could come next, along with Harsh Takkar and Parkat Singh, they will form the middle order. But for now, Vijaratne and Johnson, they're off to a good start. 23 on the board. Netra Valka has been quite economic in this over three dot balls. Oh, 
Oh. Spalled him. So Netra Volka has taken out Vijaratne second time in this series. Another failure for Vijaratne and Canada lose their first wicket. You mentioned he's taking him out for the second time this series. The first time he took him out was a delivery identical to this that was swinging in and trapped him in front. He was dismissed LBW. This time, again, around the wicket is Netra Valker, and it slants in, swings in, and takes out, for me, it looks like the top of middle and leg. Let's see here on the replay. Look at this delivery from around the wicket. Look at the in-swing. There. And he plays really just across a ball that very honestly could have been defended straight back down to maybe mid on. Wanted to keep that one in the V, but was no more playing it toward mid wicket. He will, in fact, almost looking at that replay again, looking to play that towards square leg. So playing completely across a straight ball, he will not be happy with that with Duratne. And a good, skillful bowler that Saab Netravalker is, he cashes in on those types of approaches from a batter. You have to play him with a straight bat. If you don't play him with a straight bat, you can end up paying the price is what he did here. So Pargat Singh comes to the middle. And Pargat Singh himself has struggled in this series. Scores of 19 and, and 27. Got dismissed one time in this series already by Netra Valka. One of the things, Brian, you will notice with Netra Valka, most left-hander gets the ball to angle away from the right-hander. Netra Valka has a ball that swings in to the right-hander. And I think that was used on Vijaratne. So this has been a tidy over so far from Netra Valka. He's picked up one. He's bowled three dot balls. In fact, well, he's bowled four dot balls. <laughs> the best dot ball is a dot <laughs> ball with wicket. And this is another quality one. Very good bowling from the ever reliable Netra Valka. That's what you want to see. So Pargat Singh getting in line and playing that one with a straight bat. And yes, Netra Valka is a brilliant bowler. But again, I think the delivery that dismissed Wijaratne is one that very easily could have just been played down to mid on. So he'll want to go back and look at that uh, Wijaratne and learn from it. Wanting to, I think, be a little bit more aggressive, but you, can't, you lose your shape in that way if you're looking to be aggressive. So we saw yesterday Pargat Singh run, run pass, one from Harmit Singh. <laughs> A uh, play and a miss, and a quality main wicket over comes to an end. USA has fought back here, and after three, they're 23 for one. Canada, uh, Canada batting first. So Brian Walters, Harmit Singh, four for 18 yesterday has been thrown the ball. And it's more left arm spin from this end. Same pattern as yesterday. Nosh Genji get opened the bowling from the highway end. Bowled over number two. And then after a good over, but immediately taken off. And Harmit Singh found success with his first delivery in that spell. Let's see how it goes here. And he's bowling to the man who he trapped LBW yesterday, Aaron Johnson. So he starts with a wide, with ball going down the leg side. The umpires are Jeremy and Lindo there. Looks like Malela at square leg. Yep, BJ Malela and Jeremy and Lindo. So you're going to be able to see how he approaches things here. He's going to play it into the offside and then get a, a single. In fact, a dot ball. But what I'm saying, look at the approach taken as he bowls to Aaron Johnson. Aaron Johnson very well assured. A quick, ooh, almost a mix up there. Gets home in the end. But as I was saying, Aaron Johnson is very short against fast bowling. With spinners, he generally takes a little bit of time to, to get going. And it, it appears as though Harmeet Singh thinks that he can attack him, attack the stumps, and either get him bowled or LBW. Harmeet Singh, brilliant bowler and what he does well is that he can bowl the arm ball that goes on with the arm from around the wicket the left-hander or he can have one that turns away so he's a very difficult customer in that way and pay attention to exactly how he approaches 
his spell as he bowls to Aaron Johnson in particular. So Pargat Singh comes in to strike. We've seen just about seven balls ago. The run rate was about 12, 11 and a half runs and over. It's gone up to seven and a half. We've seen a maiden wicket over from Letra Volka. Parmeet Singh has not done too bad in this over. We've seen a couple of balls, one single, one wide. And Pargat Singh, whom he dismissed first ball yesterday, will come into strike. And how much does that play on your mind, Brian? It certainly played in his mind because he didn't go charging down the track a second time. So <laughs> you're going to want to make sure that you don't give it away. In other words, you've st gotten off to a good start. And um, to the extent that the run rate now is 7.14, you want to make sure that that keeps going. So we've seen another quality start from Harmeet Singh. Picked up four for 18 yesterday. That is the top of the heap of most wickets in the tournament so far. Six. And Pargat Singh finally gets off the mark and brings the attacking Aaron Johnson back up the strike. Aaron Jones has been uh, given the leadership to today, Brian. And joins the others like Monang Patel, Abraham Khalil, and Netravaka himself was captain the U.S. at T20 matches. Of course, um, Stephen Taylor might have uh, captained one of those odd games. And Neil McGarrell, Sushil Natkarni, Steve Messiah, who's been part of USA leadership over the years. Been a quality over here from Harmeet Singh. And he's only given up three here as Johnson to face. The quality over comes to a close. So four gone is 26 for one. Sarv Netravalka, as you see there, the bowling for the USA. Sarv Netravalka, two overs, going at exactly a run a ball. The other two from the highway end, Nashkenjige, and we just saw Harmit Singh bowling very well. So Canada overall, the run rate has fallen to 6.5. 6.5 translates to a score of 130 projected. And to me, when I looked at that wicket, it appeared as though it was about a 170 wicket, Lenny. So I think Canada has some making up to do. And the Americans, of course, strong top order. And so they're going to, Canada, want to put something on the board that gives the bowler something to bowl at. Sadly, Van Skokvik with the ball in hand now from the highway end, bowling his first over of the day. Starts well, ball turned into the outside by Parkat Singh. And Brian, we saw Canadians still thinking, still thinking what's the best combination at the top of the order. Vijaratne came out today. Saw yesterday Bajwa who made a 50. Pretty sure Bajwa along with Harsh Takar will form the middle order today. Johnson, we saw Johnson in the second game getting 70 plus. That big scoring game. And now he gets ready to face Shadi Van Shokwik. It has been a very good start from the Americans, considering the first uh, a couple of overs gone for quite a few. But we've seen a made wicket over from Natural Valka. We've seen a tidy one from Harmit Singh. The length that he bowls Shadi Van Shokwik to Aaron Johnson is going to be important to watch there's a deep mid wicket in position make that yeah deep mid wicket and then there's a deep backward square leg for him so that implies that he wants to be just short of a length no coverage or no protection down the ground but if he gets too short Aaron Johnson is more than capable of hitting the ball out of the stadium you know that so he's going to have to be very very careful here so more history is written today as Nitish Kumar has been handed a, a international cap and he joins, as we made mention during the course of the broadcast yesterday, he joins the likes of Rusty Tehran, Hayden Walsh, who's played international cricket for two nations. David Marshall. Yeah, back in the days, to Shiv Narain and Foul Backers. Oh, wow. Jeremy what? Lawson one time. Yes. <laughs> Jeremy Lawson, Adam Sanford, and um, Clayton Lambert, who used to be part of the US setup. So Nitish Kumar 
on the opposite side now. Oh, big, uh, big play and a miss. This has been a very good over here from Shatley. Like for the big drive, I mentioned there's no protection down the ground, so that length has to be spot on. Cannot be too full. Shadley Van Skalkvik with a brilliant delivery, just keeping it out of driving range. Anything fuller than that, and Aaron Johnson has the reach to be able to go over the top. So it's going to be really important for him to keep that length. Well, edged away and will run away towards a wide third man area. The Sarge gets onto the ball and a couple of runs here for Canada off the bat of Aaron Johnson. Yeah, that one maybe just a touch fuller than the previous delivery, so he did get some bat on it. Didn't go anywhere near where he was looking to play that shot, Aaron Johnson. Looking to play that one over the top of the offside. Thick outside edge takes it to deep third. But you're bowling the first over to Aaron Johnson inside the power play. Only conceded five runs so far. So great start with the ball for Shadley Van Skalkvik. The ball driven into the offside. Has he found the gap? Yes, he has. Running up towards the cover boundary. And that's another four off the bat of Aaron Johnson. Five gone. It's 35 for one. Elegant looking stroke there. We see on the replay. Touch to full. Aaron Johnson does not need any invitation to play that shot. Lovely again. Similar to a shot that he played earlier in the innings. That is the end of over. Number five. The score is 35 for one. Five overs completed in this fifth and final T20 international between these two nations. Harmit Singh. Last over for the power play. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, Paula. Sorry, sorry. Morning, Nikhil. Hi, good morning, Owen. Great to have you. Pleasure being here. Good morning to your listeners. Yeah, Owen, great to have you as well, uh, Owen Brown. Someone's given not out. Owen Brown, a member of the umpiring fraternity here in Houston. He's also been joining us on the commentary team. Yeah, I want to definitely speak about some of the umpiring we've seen in this series. It's been quite innovative, some of the new additions that we've had for these two teams. Bit of indecision. This has happened a couple of times in the series with Aaron Johnson. Has some trouble with that right knee, so there's been few mix-ups that's well played key thing was to get it up and over the infield in this power play much needed boundary for Pargat Singh yes Nikhil that one's played over cover a couple bounces into the ropes I think that one is it was flight a little bit too much room outside the off stump used to be a little bit closer wicket to wicket As you can see there it's about fifth stump Giving him a better, too much room to swing his arms. This one can't be point. Not surprised to see Harmi Singh bowling two in the power play, especially with Aaron Johnson's presence, because he's really been the only bowler that Johnson has looked tentative against. Got him out in that last game yesterday. Just past Jones. Yeah, the captain will be disappointed, but. Runs are flowing for Canada. This is exactly what they wanted after winning the toss and batting first. That's correct, Nikhil. Uh, looking for a better power play that they've had in recent games. Again, this one a little bit off stump. About fourth, fifth stump once again. A little bit shorter than the previous delivery that was driven over cover for four. Nine from the over, productive to end the power play. Canada well set at the Prairie View Cricket Complex, 44 for one. 
much better line for that delivery. Pitching on the stumps, so less chance will be taken by Singh. That one just pushed to midwicket for a single. At the end of the power play, 44 for one. Just over seven for the run rate, Nikhil. Good power play, lads. I think that's on par. It's been a good surface, so I think they'll kind of disappointed Canada that they're not able to get a few more, but the fact that Aaron Johnson is there will give them, I think, a lot of optimism going forward. They'll be looking for a minimum 150, 160, given the fact that they've got to start. This partnership was quite fruitful a couple of days ago in that 30 20 international. Uh, the trend continues with seam from that northern end and most of the spin bowling from the southern end because of that wind factor you get here in Houston. Shadi Van Scalvik outside the power play. Yeah, big day as well for Aaron Jones. You would have heard Lionel Aichibar talk about it a bit earlier. Vice captain for a number of years in this USA team. There is deep third, but can't get to it. Pargat Singh, he's played a supporting role well throughout this partnership in the series. He can up the ante as well when required. Yeah, this is a delivery a little bit short on the shorter side. Not that much room to play that cut shot. So it was cramped for a little bit. Was edged fine a little bit to the left of the third man. Runs to the boundary for four runs. It was smartly played, intentional from Pargat Singh. Came a long way across. Finger goes up. Yeah, he can't believe it, but he definitely took a step outside the off stump. Look pretty adjacent. Partnership broken. Important strike. Very good delivery. Wicket to wicket. Let's take a look at the replay. So he did shuffle across the off stump. But it seems like the impact was in line with the stumps. As we can see the replay here. It's just off south. Cut in line. Hit on middle. And Vijay Malela raised his finger. Thinking that would have hit the top of middle, middle and leg. So it brings Harsh Taka in at number four. But that's fine. Margaret Singh seemed to be shocked because he thought he had a big enough step outside off, but he was definitely in line. It's quite easy decision in the end. Now, this is interesting because Canada have experimented with who they've sent at number four. At the start of the series, it was Bajwa. Now they've gone to another right hand in Taka. Throughout the series, though, they've gone to Nicholas Curtin. Left-handed option. They thought maybe with the amount of left-arm spin the U.S. have in their ranks today, could have been a good option. Seems like he thrives when he has more time. Both him and Harsh Taka have done extremely well in the one international format to start this year. I don't mind Thacker coming up a little bit earlier in the order because it seems like he needs a little bit more time to build his innings. Yeah, just on Aaron Jones, big day for him. Mentioned that he's been the vice captain for a long time, leading this USA team for the second time in his T20 international career. First time was a couple years ago in Zimbabwe. Always been amongst the runs. He's always led from the front. The leading run scorer in one international cricket, the USA. Definitely will relish this opportunity. No Monat Patel today, it's like niggle. So the USA have been able to make some changes. I think it allows you to survey some other options and to be fair Canada have done that throughout the series and I think that's what both teams will be looking to just finding that best combination finding guys who work in different roles going into that T20 World Cup 
Yes, most definitely. Both teams are looking to see what options they have, see what combinations might work, bowling combinations, batting combinations. So, good series uh, to do such a thing. Bit of movement off the pitch that time. He's got that leg cutter that moves away from the right hander. Wicket in the over, important for the USA. End of seven, 50 for two. Yeah, great to see many in attendance today at the Prairie View Cricket Complex. It is a Saturday, so they come out in their numbers. Yeah, Aaron Jones is the interim captain today, so he's taking over the reins from Monat Patel. He's gone to Nisark Patel, another left arm spinner. They've got three in their 11, three out and out spinners the USA. It's been interesting Ready, the way they've used it, them. Harmit Singh has bowled at the back end of the innings. Nosh Kenjiga has bowled in the power play. Sir Patel has bowled the least of the three, so we'll be relishing this opportunity with a few of the bowlers missing out today. More responsibility on his shoulders. He's got such a good record for the USA in T20 international cricket. Nikhil, I've been fairly impressed with three left arm spinners that's been used by US, um, especially Harmit and Notch in the power play overs. They've been very impressive. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do and how they select their 11s when you go to the T20 World Cup because you look at a team like India who could easily have two to three left-handers in that top five, Obi, with Rinku Singh, maybe Arisha Pant, Yashavi Jaiswal. So I don't know if they can realistically play three. How they go through that process and find the best one given the conditions, given the experience will be quite interesting. That is true. I agree with that. So far, this has been good from Jones and the USA. They built pressure on Johnson after the power play with left arm spin. Throughout the series, he's gone at less than a runner ball against spin compared to 170 against pace. So they want to bowl more spin at him with the ball turning away. Seems to relish pace on the ball that he can just use at his disposal. Hits those huge sixes like we saw in the power play. But so far, They've starved him of boundaries. Yes, and it would be interesting to see how he builds his innings against the ploy that the U.S. has been um, executing with him today. Very economical over. He's always stump to stump. Nisar Patel consistently attacking the stumps. End of his first and the eighth. 55 for two. I've also been fairly impressed with Patel and Patel. He's varying his pace very well. So, even, so whatever the batters want to do, they have to create their generate their own pace because he varies his pace very well. And as you said, wicket to wicket, that means that the batters, the bowler, the batters have to think about the chance that they're going to be taking because the ball is going to be on stuff. And we have a bowling change from another end. Notch has changed ends. It's coming from the northern end. This over, this two balls, we can save the single. We gotta attack now. There will be spin from both ends. Haven't seen this often in the series because of that win factor, but. Oh, how did that miss the stumps? 
narrowly missing that leg stump. He have just went on with the arm. Harsh Taka would have expected to spin the other way. By signal by the umpire. But it must like. Oh, that one could have been an iron ball. Just on some. Just, just, just narrowly missed that leg stump, Nicole. Yeah, I like the move. I like the aggressive move from Aaron Jones. A lot of captains tend to shy away from, Go, no from that end. But he understands that I think both these batters probably are better against pace. So he doesn't want to feed, especially Aaron Johnson pace on the ball. Try Van Skalvik, a couple of those cutters. It seems like his pitch is on the slower side, so his soft will be the way to go. That's correct. Second leg, please. And with the grass on the pitch, there will be some assistance for the spinners as well. Off, off. pitch I think most devoid of grass when you look at the four strips it's been quite dry here as well last couple of days in Houston so curators had some difficulty trying to keep moisture in the surface you can see there it's evident the ball kept low and I wonder how this works for Canada later on with their spinners come into the game pressure was building Really shot and he hits it well. Aaron Johnson, first boundary in a while. A little bit too short there by Ken Jigge. As you can see here, just outside off stump, a little bit too short, too much time. Johnson goes back and hits it long over, long on. Yes, the issue with bowling from that end, spin from that end as well. Ball just carries quite comfortably. So Johnson knew as he got a good portion of the bat on it, it would travel. But just getting back to that was we wait on the ball, Owen. Not, Monat Patel, the captain, yesterday said he felt the toss actually worked into their favour. They lost the toss and were asked about first. Just because of how dry conditions were, pitch he felt got tougher and tougher to bat on so I wonder if this almost works in Canada's favor and it's why for the first time in the series we've seen a team bat first oh! winning the toss going down leg some trouble at the bowlers then again yes that would be something that we could pay attention to later on as the innings or the game progresses the kill See what type of assistance the surface DJ? will offer as the sun heading to 80 degrees. Come on, Let's get out of the door, buddy. This pitch dried out significantly. Gone again. That is expertly played. Very well played. And again, the risk of bowling spin from the northern end here at the Prairie View Cricket Complex. Price you pay sometimes. End of nine, 70 for two. That one was in the slot. Pitched up in the slot. Driven over long off. Once again, for a hefty blow, maximum six. Yeah, some thinking now for Aaron Jones to do because they felt the wrath of Aaron Johnson once in this series when he got that 74. It was the 30 20 international correction the second t20 international yeah, let me go, let me go, yeah. and because of his dominance and impact in this canadian batting lineup he got them to 199 if you look if you look in recent past last two years of the t20 international cricket for canada johnson has been their most impactful scorer when he's at the crease they tend to win a lot more of the time carries the deep cover it does Nisar Patel for the second time in the series has gotten Aaron Johnson. Stump to stump, consistent, paying dividends in the end. And that's what I was mentioning earlier, Nikhil. Nisar Patel varies his pace very well. 
So you have to generate it. So if you have a little bit of room outside the off stump, you have to generate that pace or have some pace to clear that cover feeler on the boundary. As you can see here, it's not fully in the slot, just a little bit short of a length, a little bit width. Jones thought he would have been able to clear the feeler at extra cover, but in the end, Shadow, as we call him, took a low catch a few yards in from the extra cover boundary. You have to credit the planning from the USA. It just build up a pressure again. Saw it a couple of times in this series. Think back to yesterday, Stephen Taylor outside the power play. Starving power hitters of those boundaries. Aaron Johnson after the power play was going really well 24 from 14 but since just nine runs from his last eight deliveries and he felt something had to give so he brings two new batters at the crease we all have drinks Yeah, Aaron Johnson, danger man, dismissed. Third time in the series he's been dismissed, the left arm spin. The USA have done their homework. They know he's much stronger against pace. The ball spinning away yet again has worked. And Nisar Patel, for the second time in the series, has got him. Brings Nicholas Curtin, left hand and now to the middle. Someone who Aaron Jones will know well, both from Barbados. Both have played cricket together. Be interesting to see how he changes his options. No Steven Taylor in the team today, so if they want that off spin option, they'll have to go to Usman Rafiq, who we haven't seen yet. But it is an out and out yeah, off spinner, guys. genuine off spin option. Wide balls. Starts with the wide. Let's train down the leg side a little bit there. Um, the sag. Well collected there by House. Very cognizant of the fact that Curtin is a strong sweeper of the ball. Plays the reverse sweep well. He's caught third in the circle. In the deep point and long off in the offside. So Nisar Patel will want to be very straight to him. Anytime he varies too full, look for that reverse sweep, even the conventional sweep. Yes, he plays that reverse sweep fairly well. Last game he hit it about 80 yards. Tight overs from Nisar Patel. This is what he does so well. It's amazing, Bobby, that his average in T20 international cricket is 12. Doesn't get a lot of opportunities to bowl, but when he does for his two or three over spells, so consistent and economical. Rarely is searching for wickets, just building pressure, and it works for him, like we saw with the Johnson dismissal. Halfway stage, 72 for three. the replay here better giving himself a little bit backing off a little bit to give himself some room this side follows him misses it that ball at the end of 10 overs 72 for three 
So 10 over gone, 72 for 3. The Canadians are going just over 7 runs and over. Natural Volka comes back into the attack. He's, he's bowled well again. A couple overs for him, 1 for 12. And ball works into the onside and Mikel under pressure is the Canadian again in this series to put up a formidable score. Yeah, a lot of owners will be on this partnership. They want to build. They want to continue to build in this series. And one thing that improved drastically yesterday in that fourth T20 international was intent in the middle overs. So they want to continue to build on that, enhance that. And this partnership, they've been used to batting in crisis situations. Think about the league two earlier this year. It was this partnership that scored the majority of the runs. Ball flicked away into the onside. Another single here for Harsh Takar. Comes down to 58 balls remaining. Nikhil, what is quite noticeable here is while, while the US have arrested some top players during the course of this series, the Canadians are still moving around personnel, trying to get a top order correct. And what we have seen once Aaron Johnson is gone out of the equation, the others are good for maybe six and seven and eight runs and over. As we have seen from this domination in this tournament by the U.S. Doesn't look like that will cut it too much. That's a lovely shot from Nicholas Curtin. He picked it up well and hammered it over the onside. And it has gone away for four. Lovely shot from Nicholas Curtin. Yeah, the presence of a left-hander. It's amazing how much it can just alter your plans. Aaron Jones forced to go away from the spin which has worked so well on this surface before Curtin came in. That time, probably a touch too straight, given the feel he has with those square fielders deep offside. Nacho Valkar. Deep point, long off. Deep cover as well. And here comes on a careless looking shot. Over remains a six for the time being. Yeah, interesting as well from Jones. Think back to yesterday. Nacho Valker didn't get a second spell. He bowled two in the new ball. Went for ten runs. Never saw the ball again. Today, however, two good overs up front. Jones using him in the middle overs. He does have that off cutter, which he can bowl from over the wicket. Gets the ball to jag back quite sharply. And so the left-hander will move away. Cut away nicely and will run away towards the backward point area. Gajanan gives up the chase. And a couple of good shots here off the bat of Nicholas Curtin. He's picked up a couple of boundaries in this over. But this is an elegant looking shot from the left-hander. Yeah, there's a clear difference in approach today from Curtin. The way he started yesterday got that 28 from 32 deliveries. So would have been disappointed with the amount of time it took. All the deliveries used up. Today you can clearly see there's more intent right from the onset and understands the importance in these middle overs on a pitch that you think will get tougher and tougher to bat on so one of those loopy long hops goes through to the keeper 11 gone it's 82 for three So three wickets so far, Aaron Johnson for 33. Vijaratne, another failure for him. Seven, Parkat Singh also came and went pretty quickly. Nikhil, what we have seen right during the course of this series, Ready? we've seen the, the excellent bowling from the slow left arm orthodox. 
Well, we'll talk about that. Usman Rafiq, a debut game for him. He gets a ball. Yeah, Canada's first left-hander, so I think that's why it's taken this long to see the off-spinner. But on debut, he's played in one international cricket, but T20 international debut today. Big opportunity for him. So Usman Rafiq starts with the ball. Pushed into the offside, on, in the onside. Things are on the way. The left-hander comes back into strike. 53 balls remaining. They're going just about 7.4 and over. So still some ways to go in the final T20 international game here at PVCC. Swept away. That's a lovely shot. Reverse sweep. And that has gone away for four. A well executed shot from Nicholas Curtin. Yes, yeah, so adept. Very adept at playing the reverse. Anytime you're too full in length with this field, obviously he's trying to force him to hit into the leg side, being very straight with three deep fielders leg side. But this ability to reverse sweep makes you so effective as a batter. It's not only that, it's the fact that it opens up small singles like that because he's forced then to put the point on the boundary and it's an easy one to get off strike. Just smart, innovative batting from Nicholas Curtin. So another off spinner in this series for the US. You would have seen Steven Taylor being used. So not a lot of left arm spin. We haven't seen a right arm leg spinner. Usman Rafiq has gone for six in the silver so far. His, his debut over at the international level. Ball swatted down the onside, and they could come back for a couple of runs. So this has been a very good over here for Canada. The over's gone for eight so far as Harsh Takar picks up a couple of runs. Yeah, just love that option, that reverse, and I think it's something that Curtin does quite unique actually when you look at the other Canada batters many of them scored down the ground but that reverse and conventional sweep Oy. is where the game is heading especially on pitches like this Lenny where the ball is doing a lot it's spinning sometimes we've seen variable bounce it's just such a good option it opens up a lot of opportunities for him to score so nine in this over so far with Sman Rafiq his first over in international cricket National T20 cricket. Ball straight into the offside. Chance of a run out. Jones picks up. Could be gone. The finger goes up from the square leg umpire. Malena says out. And Nicholas Curtin has to go. Yes, yeah, a huge moment in the complexion of this game. Harsh Tucker had his difficulty with the running between the wickets. Aaron Johnson and him were involved in a mix-up a couple overs ago. Trying to find a quick single, trying to place some pressure back on the USA. They'll be really disappointed with this, the way the partnership was trending. Curtin wanted the single. In the end, sent back. his call Taka didn't want to go and maybe just a small slide they've had their problems with run out Staliwell run out in the first game this would be a good angle Curtin wanted it I think probably Taka would have got there if he ran but a good way to end the 12th over 91 for 4 so Dilpreet Bajwa walks to the middle First dismissal for Andres House. Done in the glove today in, in place of Monang Patel. Great to see some support coming into the ground today. It is a Saturday, of course, weekend fixture between these two teams. A bit of crowd around. There is also some cricket around on the other fields here at the Purview Cricket Complex. It is a six field facility, so allows other matches to be played well. Harmit Singh into the attack. 
Lovely shot from Harsh Takar straight down the ground. A big bang on the side screen, and that has gone for six. Big shot here from Harsh Takar. Yeah, I'm surprised actually, really surprised by this move because Aaron Jones would have just felt the wrath when he bowled Nosh Kenjige from this end. Went for third, 15 runs, and it was sixes down the ground. Johnson hit, hit him for one. Harsh Takar as well. So I'm surprised that he's continued with the spin. Even with that strong wind factor helping the ball go from that southerly part of the ground. So 98 for four, a couple of runs will let them cross that milestone of 100. We saw in the first T20 International during the course earlier part of the week, the Canadians just was able to muster 130 plus. A lot of opportunity for them to put some scores on the board. 46 balls remaining. Dilpreet Bajwa has come to the middle. Got a half century yesterday opening the batting. I tell you, he'll feel quite hard done by Lenny. 52 from 41 yesterday. I thought he was one of, if not the best batter on display. And then after opening the batting and getting a half century, Get don't number here, six. Boy. Yeah, you're right on that. Still experimenting with the top of the order. Vijay Ratne plan hasn't really worked. We saw him getting opportunities, three opportunities by Vijay Ratne. And his highest score, Vijay Ratne, has been nine. Hey! A big appeal hey! might have been uh, advancing down the wicket. It's going to be tough from that one. You think maybe this top six is a better indication of the direction they want to go for the T20 World Cup? Although it hasn't fired in this series, Shramanta, Vijana Ratna and Aaron Johnson have been quite fruitful as an opening pair. So maybe they see Bajwa as someone who can bat in the middle. End of 13 overs, 98 for four. See the two openers, back row there, Johnson and Vijana Ratna. Four 50 plus partnerships between those two. A couple of really big ones, 100 plus partnerships in Oman a couple of years ago. So. I think while they've experimented, maybe now going forward want to find that right top six combination where they can build around and get that consistency and define roles. So this Arch Patel will continue, 42 balls to be bowled. Arsh Takar has been there for some time, he's up on 22 from 15. Bajwa has just come to the middle. And they will come back for a couple of runs. Chance of a run out. Gauss not collecting cleanly. And in the end, two more runs to Canada. Crosses them over the 100 mark. It's a bit of anxious moment there as Andres House failed to collect. Yeah, interesting, really. I think he would have been gone. And again, the running, harsh tackle involved as the 100 comes up. Another close, nervy moment for Canada. They really can't afford to have runouts when the batting lineup is not firing. Mikael, when you look at the contest so far, this is the fourth contest in this week between these two teams. How strong has been the, the left arm spin from this USA squad? Yeah, it's been very strong, Lenny, but I think it's why I think about Canada's batting lineup, and I'm thinking Nicholas Curtin couple of times he's batted at four it's forced Monat Patel and now Aaron Jones today to change the way that they're planning things because of that left-handed presence oh, 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 I think oh. to have a top five full of right-handers kind of limits you as a batting lineup and teams can just throw a lot of left arm spin at you a lot of leg spin especially for this USA team that features three in their 11 probably would have liked to see him back earlier a bit more often Crucial run up though to get him. He was 15 from 10. Yeah. And Nikhil, I like what uh, Nate, Nate Nathan had said on one of his Emerging Cricket podcasts a couple of weeks ago that it appears that the US and national strength, their national bowling strength lies in their left arm orthodox, left arm orthodox. And I think he's right on that. Leave it, leave it. 
Kuznetsov has gone pretty well here from the Sarge Patel. He's gone for five singles. Sliding down the leg side, whipped away. That's a lovely shot from Dilpreet Bajwa. And it runs into the words the back with square boundary. Much needed boundary, nine off the over. And after 14, it's 107 for four. Yeah, he's quite good against spin. So in that 50 yesterday, a lot of those reverse sweeps. This time playing the conventional sweep. Rare from Nisark Patel to stray from that line. He's usually attacking the stumps. He went searching on that occasion, and just too easy with fine leg in the circle. And just coming back to the national strength that uh, that Nate would have mentioned, uh, Nikhil, I, I totally agree with him. And when you consider still Ali Sheikh is out there, Krishna Murti, Vatsal Vagela, Trinsakar Michael still, still with a chance of playing for the US at some point again, Obo Spinar. Another left armor. So the 14th over finally comes to a close. It's 103 for four. Yeah, great to see the action ha happening around the ground. Mentioned that this Prairie Cricket Complex has six fields. So it's the women's Houston Open currently happening. And women and girls of different ages competing. This is where I think the USA such a promising future in this sport it just have so much Good. youth involvement watching the game some commentating the game Lenny some <laughs> playing yes Brian and I went over there yesterday to help help out but um, the mics weren't set up but <laughs> let's see what happens today Harmeet Singh comes back into the attack so much talent in this US team I get the feeling Nick Allen in three to five years from now, Aaron. the strong US T20 team will get even stronger with a lot of play players vying for performances and, and selections on this national team in the pipeline. And I made mention of some of the left arm spinners still waiting for their turn to come. Karima Gore is another player already qualified, might have missed out on this series. Into the offside from Harsh Takar, he picks up another run. And then, of course, when you look at when you look at players that have been picked up in the major league, Raj Nanan and and Darren Davis, if they choose to play for this nation at some point later down in the in their career, those are strong Let options for the USA selectors. Thirty-five balls remaining. Harmeet Singh. Bajwa plays and misses the Canadians. Getting a chance to, to post a big score here for the US, but with 24 balls remaining, it's 104 for four. Looking like maybe 150. Oh! Yeah, Harmi Singh was Something. asking the question, but I don't think it actually touched the pad. We have just brushed it, but the knee, man. it was a much quicker delivery. Let's see this one again. Definitely did touch the pad. <laughs> Interesting. Was it missing leg? So both BJ Malela and uh, Jermaine Lindo Nickel has. That would have been my best stamping ever. It's been part of many T20 men's game and women's international. It comes a long way across, but hit him on the inside. Interesting. Hit him on the inside of that pad, but maybe could have been outside the line, could have been missing leg as well. This is interesting as well. It tells you the difference in captaincy. Mona Patel has used Harmi Singh consistently throughout the series at the back end. Three for 17 in three overs when he's bowled in the last five. But today, Aaron Jones being aggressive, bowling his fourth and final over now in the 15th, looking for a wicket. So can break free here. This has been a very good over game from Harmeet Singh. Top of the table in terms of how many wickets in this series. Six so far. So he got a four wicket haul yesterday alone. And on opening day, we saw Ken Jige picking up three for 21. Lovely, Ari. So the 15 over point. comes to a close. It's 107 for four.
Yeah, the bowling changes have been interesting today from new captain Aaron Jones. Isak Patel has got one. Van Skalvik, who only bowled a couple overs yesterday, but he's known as the death overs specialist, has got two. Nachevalka, one. Isak Patel is fourth. Hello, Brian Walters. Mikhail, it's a very festive occasion here. By the way, if there's any of you who are within the sound of our voice and can make it to Prairie View, Texas, feel free to come on down. Mikhail, the Canadians are playing for pride at this point. This is going to be a couple. But so far, you've seen the sort of the theme of this batting lineup for the Canadians is if you get Aaron Johnson early, and Aaron Johnson today not really troubling the scores as much as he'd like but it seems as though they struggle to score for runs when he's dismissed early only putting 33 on the board today keep going there Paul keep eating that metal stump fight well, this is an area where they've been quite strong in actually this phase they've gone at tens throughout the series they've had power of Captain Saad Bin Zafar Dylan Hilliger Karstak has played a few impactful cameos so they want to capitalize on this. 50 from here gets them past 160. This goes straight up. Chance, big chance. Three fielders under it. None of them can get to it. Yeah, that was not making the contact anywhere near what he was looking for there. And sprint from the boundary. Anybody, if anybody could get to that, it would have been Nashkenjige, but not even he could get there. So you get a fortuitous single there. Canada only with another 27 balls to go. Looking to push toward the end here. Just over point. Unlucky. Well played in the end from Harshtaka because he wanted intentionally to go over that offside. Yeah, the thick outside edge. I said earlier in the kill that cricket rewards aggression. And he went after this ball hard. Gave him a little bit of width in Sark Patel. He went after it hard and it just cleared the fielder there. It looks like Netravalka a short third. Flying away for another boundary. He's had a good series, Harsh Taka. Obviously, we'll be disappointed that Curtin was dismissed, but this is another promising start for him. 118 for four. to the business end of the innings. Canada have been strong at the back end of these T20 matches. Of course, both teams preparing for that T20 World Cup. You mentioned playing for pride, Brian, but I think they're playing, a lot of these guys are playing for opportunity. A lot of the new guys in the team today, Itish Kumar, for example, Usman Rafiq, who we've seen, great chance to showcase your ability. Well picked up and well placed. By Dilpreet Bajwa, got a 50 yesterday. Promising start in a different role today. Yeah, this was slanted in. Look at this replay. Tailing in toward leg stump. I think you'll find, yep. And just picked up, you mentioned, that really good pickup shot. Fine leg inside the circle, and he was, would have been too fine anyway. Deep square leg, not even able to get to that. So boundary to start things here, Dilpreet Bajwa now up to 14 from 16. Hartstacker 32 from 22. And you're right, they have pressed on toward the back end in each of their matches so far, looking so far. I'm wondering when they use Dylan Hilliger. Brian, it's been fascinating to me how late he's come into bat. When you look at his numbers in the international cricket, averages over 50. With a strike rate of 180, he's in the back row there next to Nicholas Curtin, left of screen, but such good power hitting ability. Sad bin Zafar, the captain, though, has come in ahead of him throughout the series. Well, those numbers that you just said, strike.
strike rate for me is more important than the average. Down the ground, a prolific area of scoring for Harshtaka, just over that man at long off. That is a tremendous strike. It is not easy to score heavily on the offside deep. In other words, that deep extra cover shot is not an easy one to play. And looking at this delivery a little bit wide, in fact, very wide, just inside the wide line, but he does have the reach to get to it and plays an elegant, elegant off drive for six. Goes again. This time, though, straight to the man. Van Skalvik has persisted with that full and wide plan and it's gotten results. I'll tell you what, the full and wide plan is not a bad one. And if you get hit for six, the natural reaction of most bowlers is to change something. But Van Skalvik stuck to the plan, kept doing the exact same thing, landing that ball full and outside the line of off. The previous one, Harshtaker hit for six, but Van Skalvik gets his revenge. This delivery is again in the similar area but not quite getting the same contact with it. And a clean catch taken there in the deep. Really good catch. And it, uh, that is, oh, Nitish Kumar, who's not going to drop very many. Very, very safe pair of hands. We'll see again. Slapping this one over the top. Nitish Kumar, who patrols that boundary and does very, very well at his wicket number five that goes down. Canada is now 129 for five. Yeah, it was a similar length as well to the maximum, so I think Taco will be quite disappointed, but as you mentioned, the persistence with that length and line, to be honest, going wide, forcing him to beat one of those three deep fielders. Did it once, unable to do it a second time in the over. Big wicket, partnership broken, just when Canada were looking to get on the accelerator. Bring Sad Van Fin Zafar to the middle of the captain. Going back to what you said, Nikhil, about oh, center, Dylan Haliger. You mentioned his average is 50. Center. Averages can sometimes be deceiving, particularly for a lower order batter. But his strike rate of 180 is one that I would think would cause the captain, Saad Bin Zafar, to at least consider bringing him in exactly in this spot. There's only another 20 deliveries left in this innings. But the captain preferring to bring himself on, maybe one, or bring himself in. Maybe he wants to keep the left hand, right hand combination. Interesting to see how this plays out. He starts full. That's a protection for the left hander. So, three deep leg side for the lefty. They get two there. That's good running. Something that the captain himself has emphasized on wanting to have more intensity, whether it be the running between the wickets, the fielding. So, I've been so far, he said they've lacked that intensity throughout the series. So, He's setting the example from early. He's got three deep leg side. No, actually makes the change now. So again, the plan is set for that full and wide. Deep cover, deep point, long off. Fins are far to counter his batting upside off. Just one. Good bowling in the end. Good execution from Van Skalvik. 14 from the over, but they'll take it because they've got the wicket. One, three, two for five. national debut this is some responsibility Usman or Sikh has been given the ball obviously left-handed presence at the crease thought maybe Saab Nachavalka would have been considered Skalvik has got one more Aaron Jones shows throughout the day he's been quite aggressive in his decision making he wants the ball spinning away from the left-handed captain Boy, this feels like a big roll of the dice Nikhil the off spinner bowling to the left-hander that makes sense in a vacuum but in over number 18, that is a tall ask for Usman Rafiq. Yeah, and he's only got deep cover and long off on the offside with the ball spinning away. Now he bowls to the right-hander. We've seen Bajwa already sweep. 
did that reverse sweep for six here, yeah. yesterday, eerily. Fine leg <laughs> is in the circle, third is in the circle as well. So, field is set for that shot. It's a good option if he wants to take it on. Was the carom ball, but it was six. He has nailed that. Dilpreet Bajwa, what a find he is in this series, the 23-year-old. We mentioned that this felt like a roll of the dice, bringing the off spinner on inside over number 18. Drags this from outside off, and it was, in fact, the carom ball. Went on with the arm, really. Not a lot of turn there for Usman Rafiq, and he jumps all over this Dilpreet Bajwa. Getting his first six, tremendous strike. Few stays the same. What he showed in that half century yesterday was that he's very good against spin. So they feel he can be a middle overs option. Even on a tougher surface like this, especially against pace off the ball. Tend to hear teams targeting five sixes at the back end, Brian. They've already got two in two overs, so if they continue to get at least one maximum one over, they'll definitely get into that 160. Again, third in the circle. Hit well. You never know if it was intentional or not, but you get the <laughs> desired result. Yeah. If I'm Usman Rafiq, I'm thinking I have a moral victory. Four runs conceded, but this genuinely comes off the outside edge. Might have been the current ball again with offered though. So Usman is going to want that ball a little bit straighter. But it does peel off the outside edge and runs away down the hill for four. So 11 from the over so far. Last ball to come. Will be four more. The gamble hasn't paid off for Jones and the USA. Big over. Exactly what was needed. 15 from it. Yeah, cashing in here is Canada. And again, Usman wanting that ball to be much straighter than it was. Offered him with probably a fifth or maybe even a sixth stump line. Flies away for four. No protection in the deep on the offside. End of 18, 147 for five. Jones needed to find an over from somewhere with the left hander at the crease. Went to Usman Rafiq. Now, javalka has got one more as well as Shadi Van Skalvik. There's no Jesse Singh today who would have been the other seam option to bowl one or two at the back end of the innings. Corey Anderson still not fit enough to bowl. So that over, last two overs actually have costed 29 runs. They'll be looking for a big finish, but they've got the veteran at Travalka with the ball in hand. From this end, the northern end throughout the day. Credit to Canada. They really have accelerated towards the back end. You mentioned 29 in the last two, 49 in the last five. So scoring at just short of 10 and over. So accelerating the way that they need to towards the back end of this innings. Overall run rate is 8.17. That projecting to a score of 163. I would think 170 is what they'd be targeting from here. And two things that Saad Ben Zafar has mentioned, Brian, that have really stood out to me throughout the series. One, having wickets in hand going into the last five, which they did and do have, because he feels on these tougher surfaces, it gives them more flexibility. But also, going harder a bit earlier with the depth and the way the T20 game and format is changing. So if they can take and translate this great intent from the back end into the middle overs a bit more often, I think they'll get a lot more of those 170, 180 totals. We'll look for two and we'll get it easily. But running in the end. That's good work. And for me, there is more urgency running between the wickets. Haven't always seen this from Canada in the last several matches. And again, this is essentially a dead rubber match. But you want to start getting your disciplines right, heading into preparation for the World Cup. It's good to see Canada doing exactly what they're doing now. Even 
can hit fours and sixes, but even when you don't do that, the ability to sprint and get those runs in the middle is always very important. Able to squeeze it past, but good execution from Nachevalka in this over. Been criticized a few times in the past for his death bowling, known mainly as a new ball specialist, but does have that off cutter which he goes too often and showing good ability to defend. He was very good in the major league, Brian, at the back end as well. Just constantly attacking the stumps, didn't really go away from it. Over the wicket now to the left-handed Sandbid Zafar. You saw him go to the wide Yorker a number of times. Field not exactly set for that, but does give him a couple of different options here. Again, every delivery that's not a boundary is a big win for this USA team. Saw yesterday though, 160 on a surface that had a bit more grass was quite a, quite a challenging total to chase. USA got 159 in their 20, restricted Canada to 145. So it was a good toss to win today. Quite dry conditions again here in Houston. Canada have got a plethora of spin options they can go to. Down now to the last eight deliveries of this innings. 150 on the board. We're going at 8.14. You would think that the bowler who would bowl over number 20 would be Shadley Van Skalkvik. Predictably going wide again with the field set, trying to counter that is Bajo. It's always fascinating how that cat and mouse battle happens between batter and bowler, especially at this phase of the innings where there's a field set, the batter knows the plan, then has to work different elements, the wind factor, the ground dimensions to try and find the boundary. Left oh. hand on strike now, so deep point, long off, and then three deep leg side. Maybe pace off into the pitch or straight Yorker. Was Yorker. Can't beat that man at short third. Really good over from the Travalkar. Just seven from it. The 19, 154 for five. Yeah, one over to go in this contest. It's the 50-20 international between these two teams who will meet in the very first game at the T20 World Cup. Dallas, not too far from here in Texas. And these two teams will go through a period of extensive preparation now after this series. The Bangladesh coming here to the Prairie View Cricket Complex in May. What a big series that is for the USA to host a full member. After they hosted Ireland a couple of years ago, Brian. That's a huge series just to see, I think, where they're at against quality opposition. They'll face India, they'll face Pakistan, they'll face Ireland. In addition to Canada at the T20 World Cup, that's a big opportunity for a few guys to really not only make a name for themselves, but cement the place in the 11. Van Skalvik into the attack, carved away, and just beats the point Nisar Patel it was. Looking for that wide Yorker against Shadley Van Skalvik. Maybe not quite getting it as full as he was looking for. Wanting that ball to pitch maybe right on the popping crease. I think you'll find that this lands just outside of the popping crease, allowing Captain Saad bin Zafar to get underneath that one, carving it away past backward point for bounce. Good way to start the 20th. Again, though, even though this goes to the boundary, you have to credit the execution full and wide, but he's yeah. toying with the field. Saad bin Zafar, first to the right of that deep point fielder, now to the left. Good batting at the end. We talked again. Looking at that delivery. That probably landed exactly where Shadley Van Skalkvik wanted it to land. But you mentioned toying with the fielder. That fielder at deep point. Not able to get anywhere near that one. So good start to the over here for Canada. Now where does he go? Still wide, Yorker? Yes, he does. This time even wider. 
but because Saad Ben Zafar has stepped outside the off stump, it's not a wide. That is an absolutely brilliant point because if the batter moves across to the offside, from the umpire's perspective, the wide line is assumed to have moved with the batter. So even though this might have ended up just outside of that blue line, you might just be able to see that blue line on your screen. But because he walked across, that blue line is assumed to have moved with the batter. Yeah, we'll get two. And even though he's gone for 10 in the over, on scalping, this is where the USC have been deficient in the past. They've missed someone who can bowl to a plan at the back end of the innings and execute. They've lost so many games, even in the one-day international format, not being able to contain teams in the last 10. T20 international cricket, the last five. So I wonder how Van Scalvik serves them for the future of their international hopes. Not only do they have a T20 World Cup this year, they've got the League 2, which is a very important series for them the course of the next three years now final two deliveries what's the plan he's got three deep offside and again goes full and wide Bajwa will get some strike though it's interesting because mid off you don't always see mid off inside the circle with two balls to go but Shadler Van Skokvik again bowling exactly to a plan and if he delivers the ball the way that he wants there's no way that that ball goes past mid off so good work on his, his part Sadler Van Skokvik, one ball to go. Good score so far for Canada, 165. I said earlier, Nikhil, that this looked like a 170 pitch. And I'm feeling like Canada will be happy with where they are with one ball to go. Four deep fielders on the leg side down. No one in the infield for this final delivery. And again, nails the Yorker. Just be one. They'll come back for the second. And get it. And even three. Good awareness by Sad Ben Zafar. This is a great intensity shown in the last five overs, again from Canada. 160 was enough yesterday. Today, Canada get to 168 for five. Their second biggest total of the series, with 14 coming from that last over. Fruitful finish. 168. 57 coming from the last five for Canada. So almost to the point where they were getting two runs off of every ball to close this innings. A tremendous effort for them. We see Aaron Johnson starting at the top, 33 from 23. Top score, Harsh Thacker, brilliant innings from him, 38 from 24. Ably supported by Dilpreet Bajwa, 33 from 24. And also contribution from Saad Din Zafar at the back end. Margat Singh and Nicholas Curtin also had something to say. For the bowlers, the bowlers generally, I think, did decently. A couple of them were more expensive than they would have wanted. Nos Kenjige, not often you see him go for 12 and o or 12 and over, yep. And Usman Rafiq with an expensive over toward the back end. But generally, a run rate of 8.45. The batters will feel, the Canadian batters, that they got what they wanted. But the Americans, bear in mind that they bat really well in the top four particularly. And even without Captain Monang Patel in the lineup today, I think they will fancy themselves with a good shout to be able to chase this runs or these runs. So... Short break for us, about 10 minutes or so, we'll be back for the chase where the Americans will be charged with overhauling a total of 165. We'll be back in a few minutes.
Right, time for the run chase. Promises to be quite captivating run chase. Canada down three zip in this series, but they've got a golden opportunity to win a game. A good score on the board on a pitch that continues to get drier. I think Pace off the ball will be quite critical in this innings. New opening pair for the USA as well. Andreas House who missed the last couple of games. After back to back 50s, the first two matches is back. Rushiv Joshi swing but starts wide hello Brian Walters and I would say good afternoon again Nikhil Rishiv Joshi is an interesting bowler for me similar to Saab Netravalkar in that he's a left arm bowling over the wicket to the right handers Andrea Faust and for the first time representing the US in red white and blue Nitish Kumar and it's going to be interesting to see whether or not he can maintain the disciplines that he wants to this one is a little bit outside the line of off too far outside the line of off for the liking of umpire Jermaine Lindo. Let's see if he can pull things back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, first runs, just maybe a touch too straight. Easy for House to whip off the hit. Good start for the USA. Five off the first delivery. Certainly five off the first official delivery. You'll see here a swing. It definitely gets swing. But he starts it too straight. Started it maybe on the stumps. So any amount of in-swing. An in-swing is the natural swing that you'd get from a left-handed to a right-handed batter. And the swings down the leg side, Andreas Kaus just needed to get some sort of bat on that, racing away down the hill for four. Came back. Given trouble early for Andreas Kaus. And that's the angle for the left armor, back in to the right hander. And this time, adjacent. I mentioned that the natural swing for a left handed fast bowler is into the right hander. This one starting a little bit outside off, maybe starting on an off stump line, maybe slightly a fourth stump line, and it swings back. And for me, this is hitting the top of middle and leg. Look at this delivery, look where it starts. Maybe starting right on off stump and then bouncing. The only question that BJ Malela would have had to answer for himself is that whether or not A, this would have been bouncing over the top, or B, whether it would have been swinging too much to miss the stumps. BJ Malela being convinced enough that this is doing enough to tickle the furniture. And so the first wicket goes down. Andrea Kaus misses out here, starts with four runs, but gets dismissed. And the Canadians. Strike first, USA is five for one. Yeah, captain in now, team in a bit of trouble. Yeah, that first delivery, even the very first delivery that was wide, definitely may have used that southern breeze to bring the ball back in. That time though, it happened off the pitch. <coughs> Height would have been the only thing to question. Certainly would have questioned height. You absolutely certainly would have, would have questioned uh, the line because it was certainly swinging. And so an umpire has that decision to make. You wanting to make sure that even though it's moving, you have to be satisfied enough that it's doing just enough. For me, that is maybe tickling the top of leg stump. It would be interesting to see whether or not we had umpires replay whether or not that would have been upheld. Aaron Jones, the captain, off the bar straight away. So two brand new batters at the crease. You know, definitely pitched in line, but just hit him on the top of that pad. So Hulse certainly thought it was going over the stumps. 
Josh is also a very tall man, so he gets that bit of extra bounce. He ain't given, though. Okay, we in the commentary area always have access to the number of different replays, but have to keep in mind that the umpires have one look at this in live, in real time, and have the decision to make then. Quite a big day for Nitish Kumar back to international cricket, Brian. Quite interesting as well. He plays for Canada at the under 19 World Cup in 2010. He's played what, eight, 16 1 internationals, 18 to 20 internationals for them. Then, Cowboy, Cowboy, of course, makes Cowboy, the move to the United States. Last international match he played was all the way back in 2019. That was against the UAE. 20 World Cup qualifiers, so spent some time here in the States. Wide. Not often you see guys playing for two nations, both him and Corey Anderson in this series become the 18th and 19th players to do it in T20 international history, but it's quite amazing to actually then end up playing against the team that you last played for. It's interesting because we've spoken about the number of players who have represented two teams at the international level. Not very many times that you'll have one of those teams or one of those players represent a separate country against the team with which they played initially. So Nitish Kumar in a very exclusive club here. Again, that angle from Joshi, something Sarb Nachavalkar does quite well from over the wicket. Able to Cowboys, use that Cowboys. pain, which is picked up now quite rampant from the south. Interesting. We've spoken a number of times about the strength of the USA's top order, but bearing in mind that one half of that top order is no is not playing today, the captain Manang Patel and the, his opening partner Stephen Taylor. So slightly untested here. Sharp movement back in. Good start for Canada. Wicket in the first over. Nine for one. Looking at this replay again, I don't want to look at that delivery. Boy, cutting back in. First of all, it was swinging, and then it seemed in after swinging. It's a brilliant bowling by Rishiv Joshi. Good first over for him, and puts Canada here. We see again. This will give us a good look. Look at this delivery. Snaking in and then moving in tremendously off the seam, as they say, cutting the batter in half. Vijarat Nip diving to his left to make a good stop. But that's good work by the opening bowler for Canada, Rishiv Joshi. He puts his team, I think, just a leg up in this game. Yeah, Saad Ben Zafar will come into the attack. Left arm spinner, of course. I haven't really seen a lot of left arm spin in the power play for Canada. Slip in place. Yes, 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 Jones goes it. after him, and that's traveling, yes. but not far enough. Yes, Catch shaken in the Come end. On. Yeah, Dilpreet Bajwa, the only fielder on that deep offside boundary, and Jones picks him out. This is brilliant. For those who are not familiar with the rules, if he catches that ball but then goes over the ropes, it is not only not out, but it's a six. So he has to do two things. Number one, he has to catch it. Look at this. Lopped it straight down the ground. A big strike. You don't mind him going for that strike, the captain, Aaron Jones. But look at Dilpreet Bajwa here. He has to control the ball, catch it there. Oh, very close there. Looks like he may just have stepped outside of the ropes. But the umpires are sufficiently satisfied that that right foot came down after he tossed the ball up. In other words, if he takes this ball and he goes over the ropes in control of the ball, then it's a six. But he does throw it back in time. In real time, it looked just safe on that replay. We might want to see whether or not he actually planted that right foot before touching down. But it's going to be interesting. Very frankly, it might just be, you know, again, in real time, we don't have umpires replay or anything like that. But this 
Yeah, that's going to be very close. Let's give the benefit of the doubt to the fielder on that occasion. Good work in the deep by Dilpreet Bajwa. Doing well enough to control the ball, first of all. That's the hardest part. And then to this extent, it is going to be a wicket. You certainly want to give him credit for that. And big picture, Aaron Jones losing his wicket. Second wicket goes down, and Gajanan Singh is at the wicket. The USA is nine for two. Gajay. Gajay. Left-handed presence at the crease. This was sad bit to far wicket early. Captain. Oh, yeah! He's got two and two. The USA are in serious trouble. Saad bin Zafar, the captain, golden arm, first with bat in hand, now with the ball. What a start. Brilliant start. Saad bin Zafar has been reluctant to bring himself on inside the power play throughout this series. He does roll the dice and bring himself on here. Here, finding immediate success. Going past the left-handed Gajan and Singh, and you're understanding why they promoted Gajan and Singh to bat in the number three position, uh, number four position, rather, to go across, look at that ball, outside the line of off and just kissing the outside edge on the way through to the keeper, Gajanan Singh immediately walking because he knows that he nicked that. And so the US here is in a spot of bother, Nikhil. Lost two and two, lost three inside the first eight deliveries. And all of a sudden, Canada is making this 169 target look like 269. They're really bowling well here. The U.S. is well and truly on the back foot. Yeah, he's only bowled one over before today. Saad Ben Zafar in the power play in the series. A lot of the reason because of Stephen Taylor's presence, left-hander opening the batting, but the fact that he's not playing today, Ben Zafar took the new ball. What a dream start this is. Another left-hander comes to the middle in Corey Anderson, but his team is in real crisis. The U.S. They have lost three wickets in the power play. Before today, had only lost one in 18 overs, Brian. Again, with the two regular openers That's being rested court. today, you would expect that there would be some drop-off in productivity at the top of the order. But I don't think that USA's brain trust would have figured on losing three inside the first eight. Lovely. Uh, see if he goes to another spin option, maybe someone like Harsh Taka or Nikhil Dutta. Another off-spin option with the left hand at the crease because Nikhil Dutta caused serious problems for Corey Anderson yesterday. Oh, wow. Under edge. Could have easily gone back onto the stumps. Through the legs of the keeper and into the boundary. Much needed for the USA. Well, you'll definitely take the runs if you're the USA, but nothing convincing about that stroke by Corey Anderson. Looking to go down the ground, full delivery. It came off the inside edge, beat the keeper to his right. Gujaratne and running away down the hill for boundary. Welcome boundary, but again, the US essentially on the back foot here. 13 for three, another 156 runs needed. And it appears as though they're definitely struggling. Having lost those three quick wickets, they're going to have to consolidate things here. Corey Anderson, of course, with the experience to be able to do that. It's been a really good over. This will be the danger, man. They know that they're a few wickets away, Canada, from really getting into that. No order. It is lengthened today without the presence of a few of those all-rounders. Jesse Singh, for example, is one who could have come up the order and maybe provided some impact in the middle overs. But he's not in the team today. End of two, 13 for three. Nikki jogging, Nikki jogging. Overs completed, 13 for three, the USA. 
having some trouble. Haven't really seen them too bothered in this series with bat in hand. Of course, you can't forget they've made changes, significant changes to that batting lineup. No Monarch Patel, no Steven Taylor. Andreas House is back in the team, was already dismissed. Rushev Joshi continuing. Getting that ball to come back into the right handers with that southerly breeze. Just looking at where the US is right now. It's early days yet. But I will tell you that they've already fallen behind at the end of two overs when Canada batted. They had 23 uh, runs on the board. One and the U.S. is and 10 up, runs up. behind that pace, and they've already lost three wickets. So from here, they're needing to score at the rate of 8.69 and over to win. To the extent that 8.69 is not an overpowering sort of target, they're still in the game. But they're going to have to be really careful here because they have to regroup and make sure that they A, don't lose any more wickets and then start pushing towards the total. Straight to the left hand. For Corey Anderson, he's got deep third and backwards square, so quite conventional. Deep third in place for that fuller length. But yesterday and throughout the series at times, he's changed that fielder to deep point and gone shorter. So good experience for someone like Joshi very new in his international career no Jeremy Gordon no Kaleem Sana generally keeping it on the right line and the right length you mentioned a conventional field not very surprising to see for an opening pace bowler having a deep third and a deep backward square leg as the two outside of the power play but it's going to be important for him, Rishabh Joshi, to keep his length on a short of a length sort of uh, trajectory. Because if he goes too full, no protection down the ground. And Corey Anderson is very strong hitting down the ground. Yeah, that may have been a half chance. Never easy to take those return catches. Nice Rishabh, nice Rishabh. Definitely a half chance. Struck very firmly. It goes back to the bowler, particularly as a fast bowler. Your follow through is taking you toward the batter, obviously. And so when that ball is struck right back at you, essentially it's a reflex catch. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. So technically it's a drop, but very much you can think that it would be difficult to take that type of a chance. But importantly, it is a dot ball. It stayed low, definitely stayed low. So. Worrying signs mention that fa how dry conditions are. Not the easiest of pitches to bat on. You saw that yesterday. Continue to get tougher as we went through the day. I think that's why Sad Bin Zafar won the toss today and for the first time in the series opted to bat first. Yeah, definitely stayed low. Corey Anderson coming down and having a quizzical look at the pitch. Right on that good length is where you've seen the pitch shows some signs of misbehaving in the last couple of the last several overs. Just overstepping there, Rishiv Joshi. And with that variable bounce, Brian, he'll want to stay on the stumps. He'll want to constantly target the stumps so that if one does stay low, it's challenging Corey Anderson. So it won't be surprised if the line is adjusted. Well, I'll tell you what, though. The one thing that will relieve some pressure is a no ball. Because again, if you're not familiar with the rules, the rules rather, the no ball having overstepped means that the next delivery is a free hit. So one run goes to the total, and then the next delivery is a free hit. So expect Corey Anderson swinging for the fences here. He gets away with it. Relatively anticlimactic end there to the no, to the uh, the free hits, but big picture again, you still need another 152 balls, the U.S. and you're now only um, another 52 runs, and you're down to 104 balls. So you're essentially needing to score at the rate of almost nine and over, and you've lost your top three. So it is now incumbent on you to find some way to manufacture runs here in this stage of the game. Yeah, pierces the gap. 
so prolific in the offside. Nitish Kumar, great way to get a first boundary for the USA. End of 321 for three. Absolutely brilliant stroke here from Nitish Kumar. I've seen him do this a number of times. Just a little bit of width offered by Rashid Joshi. And Nitish Kumar only too happy to cash in on that delivery. A little bit of width gives him four runs through the offside at the end of three. It scores 21 for three. Halfway into the power play. Very interesting. Sad bin Zafar's one over went for four runs. And he picked up two wickets. But just because the left-handed Corey Anderson is there, it's not bowling. So he's gone to Uday Bagwan Singh. Just gets it past mid-off. It'll be a first boundary for Corey Anderson today. It's interesting that you mentioned that, Nikhil, because, yes, Corey Anderson is there, but having taken two wickets, one of whom was a left-hander, you would think that the captain would bring himself on for another over. See there in the replay, Corey Anderson with a good strike straight down the ground. But looking at the dugout, we saw Shad Levan Skalkvik padded up. You'd think he'd be, there we go. Coming in next, and next to him is Harmeet Singh, both left-handers. So it would appear to be, this would be the time if we were at Saad Bin Zafar to continue bowling. I just wonder if sometimes you can overplay the matchup. Because if he can bowl over the wicket to the left-hander, almost challenges both edges. You saw him at the edge of Gajanan Singh, who is a left-hander, as you mentioned. Really surprised, and even in the recent times, Bin Zafar has been their best power play bowler in T20 international cricket. And yet, he's only bowled two overs in the first six throughout the series. It's been very surprising. Ah! That stone inch of the surface. Not easy. This run chase, ask here, it creeping up to nines. Very interesting because Corey Anderson using his feet to try to get to the pitch that time. So he's looking to accelerate things. Played for the first time yesterday. Scored 28. But you think that based on his career and based on his capabilities, he'd be underwhelmed by that sort of total. So looking to stamp his authority. And of course, he's played for years in all three formats for New Zealand. Playing here for the first time in the red, white, and blue colors. But it feels like he's the type of person who would grab the bull by the horns from here. And here's a question for you, Nikhil. How often have you seen a batting pair at the crease, both of whom have represented two countries internationally? I would suspect that there have been fewer than three times that that's ever happened. And I would not be surprised to find out if this is the first that this has ever happened. They actually, yeah, look, I just want to mention, to mention earlier, yes, they have actually had a number of players in those 19 players to play for them as well as other nations. So it's not really a new trend for them, but I think they'll really benefit from the additions of these two. Nitish Kumar for his experience in associate cricket and his ability. Corey Anderson, obviously, for his. That will be a boundary. Will be a boundary. Didn't quite get it off the middle of the bat. Overboard. But in the power play, you can cash in. Especially against that harder new ball. End of the fourth, 30 for three. Welcome runs here for Nitish Kumar and the Americans. Thick inside edge really looking to go through down the ground. But it takes it wide of that field at mid on. But it runs away all the way down to the boundary for four. End of four, 30 for three. The... the U.S. is actually four runs ahead of where Canada was at this stage. They had 26. 
We'll be right back. Dylan Hilliger for the first time today. So since Corey Anderson has come to the crease, it's been all pace. I do find that really surprising, given what we saw in the first innings, given how dry this surface is. Here's a left hander. Yeah, I was just making a point in the last over. Nitish Kumar experienced enough in associate cricket. Corey Anderson takes the experience to another level. He played at two T20 World Cups, 2014, 2016. To have him, I mean, you can think about it, they're playing India, for example, the guys that he's played with, Jasper Bumrah or Sharma, Hardik Pandya to some extent. So definitely will benefit to have the most experienced player in the team by a long way firing before that major tournament. I'm sure he'll be looking to play all three games against Bangladesh. Man at deep square puts it down. The plan was set. Harsh Tackett was a backward square. Oh my goodness. Flicked directly to backward square, chest height. Interestingly, look at this replay. Into the body and he flicks it into the deep, right to Harsh Tacker and he puts it down. I was about to say, interestingly, Nicholas Curtin ran all the way down to Harsh Tacker to essentially pat him on the stomach and say, don't worry about it. But that is a big miss, a huge miss. Yeah, the fielding has let them down a couple of times in this series. Keep Yesterday, working, yeah, lads. Working, yeah, lads. 10 to 15 runs, their boundary fielding. Keep working, boys. That second T20 international, they dropped four catches. So the ideal start, captain continues to elaborate on intensity in the field. Yeah, that is a big miss. You're going to want to take those. Dylan Hilliger, of course, we've talked about his prowess. And the way that you use him is essentially as, as you would say, an attack dog. You want to have him test the middle of the pitch and trouble the batters with their definitely with, with, with the line and the length that you would think would challenge them. But so far, not yet able to generate that type of bounce, Dylan Hilliger. Interesting to see how he goes to Corey Anderson here. Yeah, Sam used the bounce really well yesterday. He was very selective in fuller deliveries. He used them as wicket-taking deliveries, got Steven Taylor. But that hard length that he goes to naturally, especially on a pitch like this, bit too paced and he's quite skiddy as well it can be quite menacing I tried him in different phases throughout this series sometimes in the power play sometimes at the back end it's probably best suited as a middle overs and force of four them if he can give them one in the power play even better end of the fifth one to go in the power play recovery is on yeah, for man. the USA 32 for three boys, let's go around, boys. So 33 for three. I'm joined with Owen Brong. Owen Brong, we've seen a good fight from Canada. We've seen a drop catch from Harsh Takar as he comes into the attack. Ooh, 
Oh, yes, Lenny. Um, unfortunate jump catch at backward square. Hopefully, he will, he will be able to redeem himself with the ball in hand. Well, he's been brought into the attack. We'll be bowling to Corey Anderson. Uh, playing a miss, and we saw Corey Anderson scratching him, uh, scratching his way to a 20 plus yesterday. Today, he's looked a little bit better. Yes, just getting used to the pitch. Uh, a bit too placed, as was mentioned before. Difficult for batting. Tugged away into the onside, and this will run away for four. A shortish ball from Harsh Takar. And quickly into his wicket is Corey Anderson, and he picks up a boundary. As we can see from a replay here, ball's just short of a length. Actually, that ball was on off stump, but Corey Anderson made good use of the crease, went across, and swept to backward square for a boundary. It's 132 required from 87 balls, asking over nine runs and over. They're going at 6.7, so there's a bit of a gap there. And Anderson picks up another single, I know. Previous commentators, Brian Walters and Nikela Uttam Chandani was talking about a um, couple of players who played for two nations now. They're out in the middle. The question is, how often has it happened in T20 International? We'll have to get, get some time on that, Owen Brown. We'll have to go sort some archives <laughs> when this game is done. Definitely. But two experienced batters at the crease. Um. <laughs> So it's all happening here. Ball played just by the keeper. Trying to get a run out here from Nitish Kumar. All right, the delivery is to the pad. Missed it. Going down the leg side. Not out for leg before. But then the keeper tries to stump. Kumar, who was actually in the crease. So both umpires decided that it was a not out decision. So this partnership has gone up to 29. We've seen get it, get it. One. some quick wickets for the US. Six over comes to a close. The power play done and dusted is 39 for three. So at this rate, the Canadian, te Canadian team was 44 runs at the power play. So the U.S. is slightly behind in terms of the run rate, but definitely with wickets lost, they're on the back foot. So 39 for three, Dylan Pelaga will continue. Hold a tidy first over Owen Brown. Only gave away three, should have picked up the wicket of the man. He's bowling to Nitesh Kumar. Oh, it's high in the air, short and pulled over the onside. And that has gone over the fence a long way. That's gone for six. I would love for everybody to take a look at this replay and admire this pull shot. He just swiveled and the extra pace that's given to the batter by Helliger just made it that much easier for the ball to sail over the mid-wicket boundary to six. So a couple of fours and one six for Nitesh Kumar. And it went wrong, we would have seen a couple of classy four in one of the previous over. And one of the reason when I look at this Canada-US match in this past couple of days, it went wrong. 
one of the reasons I've noticed that the Canadians has a big hole in their middle order. It is because Nitish has come over to the U.S. side. Yes, he's a big void. Big void to the Canadian batting team um, caused by Nitish Kumar leaving that setup. I'm sure he's welcomed by the U.S. national team, but a big void being left by the Canadian team. And that's why they rely so much on Jones, sorry, from Johnson, who opens the batting for them, because when he does deliver, it leaves a lot to be asked of the other batters, top and middle order especially. So Anderson will pick up another run, and when you talk, in fact, they'll come back for a couple of runs. Four. Running up towards the, what should have been only a single Owen Brown has gone away for four. And that is what has been one of the difference between these two teams. Yes, and, and as, a, as a professional international team, score is now 50 for three of 6.3 overs. As a professional team, international team, it's kind of disappointed to see the feeling that's being, that's on display by the Canadian team. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen during the course of this week, the U.S. has not only dominated through their batting and their bowling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen some very sharp feeling from the U.S. Can't say 100% on the Canadian side, 50 on the board. We've seen a very good partnership here between Nitish Kumar and Corey Anderson. Nitish has gone on to 20, got a life at 12. In fact, Nitish is on 19. seen an over from Heliga that has gone for 11 so far Owen Owen Brown yes um, the pair that we have in the middle right now with Anderson and, and Nitish Kumar I don't think there is a better pair that the US would want in the middle in this state of the game being 50 for 3 with a target that's 169 with the experience that they have to offer. Short ball called the wide. Yes. Good, good call on the wide, Owen Brown, uh, an umpire. Yes. Yourself? Yes, a short ball above the height of the batter, standing in the upright position at the pop increase. It's 118 to win from 79 balls, still asking about nine runs and over. And that was the one allowable short pitch ball above the shoulder for the over. Coming down charges, Heliga will only get a back single. Up, up, that up, will up, complete up, the seventh over. And after seven, the USA, in reply, they're batting a 52 for three. And just for those that are watching right now, one of the reasons why you noticed Corey Anderson chip down the wicket for that last delivery, the previous ball was called a short wide ball, one for the over, which means the chances of him bowling another short ball of that height was minimal because it would have been called a no ball, which would have been a free hit. So just strategically chipping down the wicket, expecting a ball that's going to be pitched up a little bit more. Uh, yeah, Owen Brown, you're right on that. And, and those are knowledge that he has acquired having played so long at the international level. Nickel Dutta comes into the bowling attack. We saw, as, we saw the off-spinner bowling extremely well yesterday and he comes in here with the United States requiring a nine from here on yes and this, this should be a very good matchup to watch um, half great bowler that's going to be turning the ball a little bit away from Corey Anderson who's a left-hander so it's going to be interesting to see how this matchup plays out so we'll come into both the Corey Anderson we've seen a very good partnership between the pair out in the middle four, 40 plus still some ways to go you get the feeling that Canada is playing a way better game than what we saw in the earlier part of the week they came into this match with three nil down in the series they're hoping that they can win one just for respectability and a bit of pride yes it that's definitely the case uh, even leading up to the series they played I think it was four teams against the minor league um, Dallas Mustangs set up just to prepare for this series and they lost.
three other four games as well. So good start here from Nick Aldata. When you look at his uh, Canadian team, he spoke of Nitish Kumar. Nitish Kumar is listed as one of the youngest players to play international cricket for Canada. And Owen Brong among that list is the man bowling here, Nikhil Dutta. They were very young when they made their senior debut for Canada. Nitish Kumar comes in to strike. He was just about 15 years plus when he played senior cricket for Canada. Vendra Gunasakera was another player at age 16 played for the Canadian national team also Hiro Patel very young players who represented Canada at the senior level get it, get it. One, one, one. seen a very good over here from Nickel Dutta so far and I'm surprised uh, Owen Brown he didn't play the first two two matches Yes, um, reasons that weren't shared with us. Not sure if they're trying to give some players, some other players, option just to see what they they have to offer. Uh, but better late than never. Tucked into the onside again from uh, from Nickel Dutta. This has been a very good over. Only three runs and four balls. So the world, so the road to the World Cup passes through PBCC. Yes, it does. With both teams looking to put under their belt a lot more practice game. The US has Bangladesh coming in May. That's not, correct. Not too sure what the Canadians have planned. But Brong did realize that probably in Bangladesh the, the, the US will face a more stronger opponent. Yes, I would think so. Um, Bangladesh, being a full nation, they've been playing consistently all year long. Quality players should be a very good test for the for the United States to see exactly where they are so close to the World Cup. So Corey Anderson on strike. They formed a very good partnership. We've seen a very good over here from Nickel Dutta. He's only conceded four at a time in which the U.S. They need about over nine runs and over. So every over you bowl and in excess of nine is not score wrong. It gets higher for the next over. Those, that's how the numbers play. This has been a quality one from the off spinner, Nikhil Dutta. Oh, lovely oh, shot. shot. Reverse oh, shot from on. Corey Anderson. And he picks up a much needed boundary. I was just about to say, that even though the boundary hasn't been struck, they have been turning the strike over, which is needed. But you can see that this ball was pitched just outside the off stump, reverse swept to backward point, which is a very needed boundary. And the score is now 60 for three off eight overs. That's okay, one. So I thought he'd let him change the shot. He's hard to get under. That's Adi. Oh, sorry, sorry. Huh? Next ball's not reaching. Yeah, I know. It's gonna bounce before the crease twice. I go back a bit on the top. Uh. So eight gone, sixty for three. Owen Brown. 109 of 72 balls and you've got to yeah you've got to give the canadians a little bit of credit here probably with their nose in front at this stage of the game saw bin zafar oh that's a lovely struck straight down the ground and i'm surprised that hasn't gone for four as saad bin zafar comes back into the attack uh, yes skipper but, uh, bala, bala. on this one's pitched on leg stone this is trying to go straight Unfortunately, well, fortunately for him, did hit it cleanly and it fell Go a back. bit short of the long on fielder. So this partnership has gone beyond 50. We've seen a very good knock from Nitish Kumar and Corey Anderson. Inside there, chance of a run out. The throw comes in. Not a good one. Over the head of Saad bin Zafar. 
And again, Nitish Kumar Bosani, survives. Bosani. Keep working, keep working. Again, unfortunately, the Canadian team is not up to par with their feeling. Keep working, this Sally. one, as you've seen, inside edge to short fine leg. Stranded halfway down the pitch was Nitish Kumar. Bad throw over the head of the skipper, who I'm sure wasn't very happy. Big strike from Corey Anderson. And that has gone for a maximum. Big shot from Corey Anderson. Come boys, come boys. Let's support Skippy Corey alive. Anderson come should on. be salivating with this matchup. All the way to the, the end, all the way to the end, last come on. Bowling into him. And he will be hitting with the breeze. Let's get one here, get to the skipper kill, went, lads, come on. Skipper Zafar went up a little bit too much in the slot. Get Easy the low mid lot in here, lads. One straight back here, over boys, his head on. into the side screen for maximum six. Oh, he goes into the onside. Has he have enough wood on that one? Yes, he has. He goes one bounce for four. And in two balls, Corey Anderson has picked up ten runs from Saad Bin Zafar. Yeah. So this one bowling around the wicket. This one tugged from outside the off stump, bisecting the long off. Long on and the middle. Sorry, keep working, sorry. Just bounces inside the ropes for four rounds. A couple of those shots are the strong areas of Corey Anderson. And now Sam one, one 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 comes one around the wicket. A couple of runs again here for Corey Anderson. This over's gone pretty well for the Americans. 13 off this over so far. Yes, and that was good running between Anderson and Nitish Kumar. Ball stroked or played along the That's ground to the deep the wicket boundary. And they scampered two for a couple of runs. So 96 to win from 67 balls. And That's I get feeling that this is setting up to be a very exciting finish, no matter which, which way the result goes. But Canada badly need a win on this one. And in speaking in terms of badly needed, they badly need to break this partnership, which is developing nicely. I think this partnership will make or break. Well, the fact is, Owen Brown, they've had two opportunities to break this partnership, but we'll talk about that when we come back. Nine gone is 73 for three. So welcome back when Brown 96 to win from 66. Nickel Dutta for the quality first over, only giving away eight. Oh, Nitish Kumar gets a long hop and takes this one out of the playing area for a massive six. That adjective is correct. Long hop, a long hop indeed. Nitish Kumar had all the time in the world to wrap back. And hit this one over deep mid wicket for a maximum. So Kumara goes up to 28, giving a life when he was dropped by Harsh Takar on just 12. Braun, how inspired are you as a cricketer? <laughs> just allowing yourself to be in the in the boots of Nitish Kumar. How inspired are you to come against a country that you play for? I can just imagine um, representing Canada at such a young age, at the highest stage, the Cricket World Cup, and then a few years later playing against them. Ball eased into the onside. We've seen a very good partnership between Corey Anderson. He's looked so much better today. And then the 88 went from 63 balls and still asking 8.3 and over. They're going at 8.5. We've seen a very good knock from Nitish Kumar and Corey Anderson.
opportunities presented themselves to break this partnership. We saw not too long ago a stranded Nitish Kumar. A better throw would probably got him out. Definitely. And the unfortunate thing is the feeler at short that short front leg had plenty of time to get that throw. So Corey Anderson, he's in his 40s, still 87 to win. Oh, he comes down the track and takes this one out of the playing area again. And so another six off the bat of uh, Corey Anderson, and it's 88 for three. One thing we know, doesn't matter if he's hitting with or into the breeze. Once Anderson hits it, it stays hit. Dota here has made a mistake of going into the slot. Corey Anderson just chips a little bit, a couple steps, and hits that over long. His tenor is gone, a 16 run over the benefits, the Americans, so 10 gone, it's 89 for three. They need 80 from the next 10 overs. Yes, as we are coming up to a lunch break, I mean, sorry, a water break, one thing I could say for sure, batting or batting towards the south into the breeze if you could score eight to ten runs per over that makes it end. so at this stage at the drinks break we have 80 for 10 of 10 hours Welcome back to the Prairie View Cricket Complex. And what a thrilling 10 overs we have in store for you. 80 needed off the last 10. The USA, who were in all sorts of trouble at 13 for three in the first two overs, have since recovered. Great partnership by Corey Anderson and Nitish Kumar worth 80 from just 52 deliveries on not an easy surface to bat on. Uh, yes, Nikhil, we come down to the last 60 balls, still asking eight, eight, eight runs and over. Kala got two overs, no way, none for 16. Should have picked up the wicket of um, Nitish Kumar when he was on 12. Nitish Kumar has benefited from a couple of chances. One into the hands of Harsh Takar and another one seemingly stranded. We saw a very errant throw. He's done that a lot today, Corey Anderson. Used his feet against the seamers, and I think it's a really smart method of operation on a pitch where you know, maybe just holding up into the surface, tougher to score because of that slow nature. He's really used his feet to get to the length of the 
ball and it's worked wonders for him today. What about Nitish Kumar though, Lenny? On a pitch like this where we've seen everyone go in and around and run a ball, he's gone up close to 170 strike rate. Yeah, he's been good. A couple of shots, there's a couple of fours to start with. Your classy shot through the offside. Lovely drives and I made mention when I was here with Owen Brown, one of the youngest player to have played senior cricket for Canada. Just was about 16 years old. And he made his international debut, so he's been around Canadian cricket for some time, very experienced comes in here have, wanting to prove a point and so far he's done that up and over no carry though I thought maybe he had the legs on it to go all the way but that is Bolelli, that Bolelli, factor Bolelli. on display very tough to hit boundaries there you see how strong it is now but the shirt of Nish Kumar is coming from that suddenly part of the ground and it can be a swirling win at times so Corey Anderson on 49. Looked a much better player today. He was quite fluent. A couple of sixes for him. 6-4 Six, so far. He's on the verge of a half century. Many will be hoping this is the start. We have big things to come in Corey Anderson's USA career. Gets the 50. Just 39 deliveries, a 30 20 international half century. So, a couple of sixes and six fours for Corey Anderson. He's featured in the big partnership of 84 between Nitish Kumar and himself. He gets another half century, but well he gets a half century here and he joins a handful of players who picked up a half century. Again, to extra cover. And again, another boundary. Nitish Kumar, he has been superb today. He's a lovely player on both sides of the wicket. And this one through the offside. Hitting through the lane from Delon Heliger. And that crashes into the offside boundary. A lovely shot again from Nitish Kumar. He's been fluent all day long. Stayed low. Oh, yeah, Vijay Malayla says no. That's interesting. It definitely kept a low. Where did it hit him? Yeah, we've seen the odd balls keeping a tad low. Got into position. Expecting a trusted bounce on this pitch. He remains on, uh, he remains on 35. 97 for 3. Where did it hit him? Was he in line with the stumps? Interesting. Didn't look that close in real time, but now, just wonder. So 72 to win from 55. Heller has gone for eight in the over. Nitish Kumar, he's really played well. Made mention. Three fours and a couple of sixes. Ends the 11th. Another progressive over for the United States in this run chase. 98 for three. Just take a look at this moment. Big moment in the day. Nitish Kumar already given a life. Now, the ball stayed low. Yeah, maybe missing leg. Depends on the impact. Hilliger was very confident. No success though. They need a wicket, Canada. Need it quickly. Uh, you want me... So we've seen another half century from the players in this series. A couple of half centuries from Monarch Patel, one from Steven Taylor, one from House. In fact, a couple from House. We saw also a big 50 from Aaron Johnson, who lost 70 plus. And now Corey Anderson has uh, come up with a half century. Harsh Takar comes into the attack. Yes, a statement innings, and obviously you want to 
kick on and win this game for the USA, Nitish Kumar. But being picked in this squad after the national tournament here, didn't start in any of the first three matches, but to come in and get an opportunity like this, and this is why I say games like these, even though the series is finished, is very important because now he can win this game, take it deep, get a big 50. All of a sudden, the prospects of him starting in that 11, maybe against Bangladesh in a month's time, look quite high. So it's the way that he's gone about the run scoring on a tough surface. So the 100 comes up, comes up in the 12th over. Corey Anderson goes up to 51. Kumar is on 37. And you're right on that, Nick. Could stay, first of all, could stake a claim that he should always be in any US T20 squad. Given an opportunity here to play, and he's really come out well. And they need 68 for 51. And this big partnership of 92, along with Corey Anderson. Is proving to be quite pivotal here for the US. How much will they rule that moment? Canada, they had him in the fifth over with Nitish Kumar on 11. Put him down and since he's gone up. Attack! Give him back first. So we saw in the first game the Canadians posting 132 or 133. Coming in front of me, I can't see. Able to pull that. The loss of four. One the two games we saw the US batting first, getting 230 at, on one occasion, 159. The fourth to 20. Outside! That was good! Not out, outside. You know, I haven't really seen Corey Anderson a lot of times play that switch hit in his career, but saw this yesterday as well, where they forced him to hit offside. Purposely bowled a quite wide line to him. And it forced him to innovate. Trying to go over that third region. There's no fielder there. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Know how strong he is. Leg side, leg side dominant. So they're purposely trying to make him score in the offside. Just the four oh, singles, oh. tight over, 102 for three. Keep going, lads. Okay, keep going. Come on, boys. Six, seven needed at one stage. You would have thought, even after the power play, they were 39 for three. Didn't look very likely, especially after Saad bin Zafar took two wickets in that second over. But this partnership, USA debut for Nitish Kumar, Corey Anderson in his second match for this nation. Fruitful. It's coming quick time as well. So it's forced Saad bin Zafar to change something. Seeing the pace from that northern end, given the wind factor, which is quite strong now so there's a risk to your spinners from there so in the US innings a couple of spinners both from that end and it was very easy for Harsh Taka and Co to hit down the ground need to find a wicket must find a way to find the wicket starts full keep up keep up keep up yeah, yesterday what they did well to Korea 28 from 32 by his standards, it would have been quite on the slow side, but again, not the easiest of surfaces. What they did well to him though, was bowl consistently fourth or fifth stump. He had to go through the offside or tug it into the leg side. And the nail of boundaries build up. Yeah, and it got him the wicket. So I wonder if a similar strategy can be employed where you set predominantly offside field and force him to the offside, but don't underestimate the Kumar's contribution. It would definitely take pressure off Anderson. So Rishiv Josi coming into this game, ten overs in the series, one for eighty-six. He's bowling at one for eighteen, still sixty-six to get. Gone aerial. He has nailed it. Nitish Kumar, what an innings this has been in his first match for the USA. 
Yeah, timed it well. Short ball from Rashid Joshi. Not a good one here. Not to a well set Nitesh Kumar. And look at that with all the ease in the world. He's in top form coming into the, his first game of the series. And he's really played a good hand. He goes into the 40. He's up to 44. Statement piece, Lenny. This is a statement piece for Nitesh Kumar. It's a middle order from the USA that hasn't really fired in the series. A lot of their runs has been scored by the top three. Short, short, low will be very impressive what he's seen. He's hard to bowl to because of strong leg side square ability and then very strong in front of square on the offside. Extra cover down the ground. Yeah, Nikhil, I've spoken about how Nitish Kumar is so important. First of all, he was so an important player for Canada. And my question to you, having seen or followed Nitish Kumar, has he left a void in the Canadian side? It's been a few years and he hasn't played since 2019. So I think they would have almost moved on and found other top order batters who can fit that mold. You've seen Harsh Taka and his resurgence. Nicholas Curtin is one they've added. I don't know if necessarily he's left a void, but definitely someone that I think you would want in your team if you have the opportunity to get him. So 59 to win from 45, still asking 7.8. So far it's been quite easy, even when they haven't scored boundaries, it's been a lot of singles, a lot of strike rotation. Even the odd ball staying down and staying a bit low, these two have navigated this run chase extremely well. So it comes down to 58 to win for 44. Nitish Kumar has batted extremely well. He's up on 45. That partnership has gone over a century, 102 to be exact. Yeah, very commanding. He to get to the boundary because that man at long on is quite straight for that strong shot down the ground, but Every shot he's played today has just looked in control. Yeah, we've seen an over that's gone for 10 here from Joshi. A young addition to this Canadian team. We've had a big crowd today, uh, Nickel, by, by the way things have gone all week. We may mention there's another tournament going on on the other pitches. Scored off of every delivery in this over with the Maximo as well. Exactly what they require the USA. 11 from that over, 12 correction. 113 for three. Partnership now up to 104 from just 71 deliveries. The scoring has been difficult, but the USA are in control. 56 needed off the last seven. They'll take that. And they'll back themselves to get it as well. Canada will be thinking a wicket. Harsh Takabo, the really tight over in the last one. Change of ends for him. No correction. Same end. Last of went for just four. <laughs> Narrowly missing the stumps. You can see what they're trying to do. Trying to get the ball to spin away. Dutta was that man yesterday to fill that role. Kept Anderson quiet. Today it's been harsh tackle. This time he's got bad on it. The off spinner to the left hand, the matchup works. That's the wicket Canada have been so hungry for. Anderson departs. Yeah, big blow here for Harsh Takar. He is taking out the left hander. Lovely, Harsh. And Corey Anderson falls for 55. Looking to go through the onside. And the faintest of edge into the safe gloves 
of Richard Ratney. Take a look. Yeah, looking to go to the onside shot. He's been so strong on the onside. And the big partnership of over 100 comes to an end. It's 113 for four, still needing 56 from 40 balls. Massive wicket. Now exposes the all-rounders, exposes some of those lower order batters. Charlie Van Scalve, another left-hander. Comes to the middle, so able to maintain that left-right combination. Be good for Canada as well with the amount of offspin they have in their arsenal. So Harsh Takar has bowled extremely well as Corey Anderson makes his way into the shade. Spotted well, Nick Nickel along with Nitesh Kumar over a hundred runs partnership, and the USA is to go on and win this game. That partnership probably the vital one so far as we come down to 56 runs to win for 40 balls. Yeah, can Canada use this opening now? They've got a wicket, they've broken the partnership. Can they apply some pressure? Maybe deny the US a boundary for a couple of overs. Get that ask rate closer to nine and a half, ten. That's when you'll really start to feel the pressure. And it can also work in favor of getting Nitish Kumar because then he feels he has to find the boundary, do something extravagant, and it gives you an opportunity to get a wicket. Oh, played so delicately. With real dexterity. Yeah, ball guided away, turning away from the left hander. And Shadley Van Salkwick gets off the mark in fine style. Look at that. All elegance. A lovely late cut. And it's four runs for the Americans. 117 for four. So that equation comes down to 52 to win from 39. Still asking eight runs and over. Nitesh Kumar is well set. That's got a bit busy. He's had a few impactful knocks with the bat in hand. This series. Very busy player. And again, finishing ability that the USA may have lacked in recent times. Harmit Singh as well, who's to come. We saw what he could do yesterday. Good effort, Ashi. Uh, yes, Nick, in the, in the couple of games that uh, Van Skalkwick has played, he's yet to get dismissed. 13 not out and 15 not out in the series. Seen a lovely first shot that gone away for 450 runs lead from 37. This has been an over that has given away six. He's picked up the wicket of Corey Anderson. Again, trying to play late, as late as possible. Wicket in the over, crucial. 119 for four. Right, six overs to go. Canada searching for a first win in this series. Resilient partnership, but it's 50 to get off the last six with six wickets in hand. They'd rather be the chasing team, even though there's a strong breeze. Tough surface. Dylan Hilliger bowling his fourth. has been there from the start you get the feeling Nick that if he stays to the end with 35 balls still to be bold if it goes that distance little please he's gonna be a key man here he has been US key batsman so far so 49 to win from 35 ah. balls Dylan Heliger This has gone for three, twelve, and nine. Yeah, it's been great as well, Lenny, as we come to the back end of this series. It's been great to see the 
match officials. Someone like Rayon King, former West Indies fast bowler, here as match referee in his 37th T20 international. <laughs> but the guidance, that's the biggest thing. The guidance, the experience he brings will really help the level, the caliber of umpiring in the country. Short. He was a good fast bowler in his day, Lenny, from your part of the world, Guyana. Uh, yes, Nick. Very athletic run up when he played for for the West Indies and certainly his career. I didn't see too much of him then. Was he quick or not really? He tells me he was quick, but I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was good. Man. Very good. Silky, silky run up and uh, a very tall man was able to extract some bit of bunks. Ryan King, back in his young career, his youth career, was always destined to be one of the great fast bowlers of West Indies cricket. And, and ended up to be a good one out of Guyana. And then, of course, um, on to playing for the West Indies and, of course, at the highest level. Yeah, Dylan Helliger will hope to follow in his footsteps from FC Quibble in Guyana, then move to Canada. But just, I think, to have people like Rayon King here, the impact he would make on the youth that have watched, sharing knowledge, especially with the umpires, is it Jeremy Lindo, Vijay Malela, early into their international careers. So that level of professionalism really will benefit them moving forward. Yeah, Nick, you're right on that. In addition to the umpires on the field, there's so much work that goes behind the scenes. Yeah of match referees and other umpiring officials, their third umpires, their fourth umpires, their match referee. And I think that's one of the things that Danny Khan and the Umpires Association is trying to look towards to get some local match referees to really get the system in place. And this is where Rayon King has been working with U US officials to really put things in place. Really good over so far. Just three runs from it. Can he close out the over and his spell? Gets away with it. Fine leg was up. Had he got bad on that, Nitish Kumar would have been an easy boundary. Yeah, game nicely poised. Should be a nail biting finish. 46 off the last five. One, two, three for four. Come back 123. 123 for four. 46 to win from 30 balls. Nitish Kumar is on 49. And we welcome back, back Brian Walters. Brian, we are in to the home stretch. Nail bites are of a finish on the way here. Lenny. By the way, that is 50 for Nitish Kumar. For the first time wearing USA colors, and again, wearing the red and white for the most of his international career, but for the first time today wearing the red, white, and blue, and getting 50 in the colors of the USA. So his job is not finished, but I'll tell you what, Nick, uh, Nick I'll tell you what, Lenny, this is going to be an easier job because somebody like Nitish Kumar is at the Oi. wicket. So Saad bin Zafar. Comes in bowling the 16, still 45 to win from 28 balls. We've seen a half century from Nitish Kumar. Down, 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 one. Brian, in addition to Andres House, who got a, 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 a 50 on debut, Nitish Kumar joins him. In the context of this game, it's important to have somebody in the middle order stick around scored around a strike rate of 100 and he's scoring in fact at a much higher strike rate his strike rate is 156 but it's going to be important for him to push all the way through as it's driven down to long off so but lenny 
at this stage, with three singles have, uh, having been conceived in over number 16, 27 runs or 27 balls remaining for the three runs needed, needing to score at the rate of just under 10 and over. Brian, when you when you understand the context that they were batting at uh, a tree dung for just nine on the board, gives you how much important this knock has been from Nitish Kumar and then of course Corey Anderson, who formed a hundred and five run partnership. I will tell you that the fancier chances here for the U.S. Down one. From the standpoint that you have Harmit Singh still to come. You have Nosh Kenjige who can throw the bat. You have Usman Rafiq who has excelled on this very ground in the minor leagues. So you fancy your chances if you're the U.S. at the back end looking for a handful of runs and a few balls. End of over 16, 128 for four. So Bagwan Singh has been given the ball and he's here to defend 41 from 24 balls. We've seen a couple of very good last couple of overs. One from Harsh Takar that went for six. One from Saad Bin Zafar that went for four. Another time, Brian, in which the U.S. still looking for over 10 runs and over. We come down to the last four. 24 balls remaining, 41 to get. The question is going to be hard. 10 runs and over is not easy. U.S. Thick outside edge running down to deep third, but I think the U.S. is going to want exactly what they have right now. You can pick up the ones and twos that puts you in a position of being able to sort of push on toward the total and then the odd boundary. Maybe not quite at the stage yet, Lenny, where you have to have a boundary, two boundaries every over, but more importantly, they want to get those ones and twos. No dot balls the rest of the way. And I think they'll do well from this standpoint. So 39 to win from 23, still asking over 10 runs and over. We've seen a really good knock from Nitish Kumar. Given a life, very easy chance into the hands of Harsh Takar when he was on 11. Oh, look at that. He tees off. It's got a long way. One of the bigger ones that we have seen here on this pitch. And it gone for six. Oh my goodness. Up and over the top of long off. Look at this strike. Maybe just a touch too full by Uday Bhagwan Singh. And look at this strike by Nitish Kumar up and over. Nitish Kumar knows that he got that one out of the screws. Brilliant strike. And now just 33 runs needed from the next 22. That changed the equation. Goes into the onside looking for a couple of runs. Heliga comes around and the other fielder, he beats the gap. And so his four more runs off the bat of Nitish Kumar. 12 off this over in just three balls. Nitish Kumar in the gap between mid wicket and long on. And we see a good just piercing that exact gap. The placement on that was so absolutely spectacular. Four more important runs. Just those two strikes, Lenny, brought the required rate down from above 10 down to 8. Going around the wicket now. Straight this time into the offside. Fielder comes in, takes the catch. And Nitish Kumar falls. It's 140 for 5. Oh, my goodness. I mentioned he went around the wicket to change the angle. That's a good change from Uday Bhagwan Singh. And I think you'll find here, look at this angle, well outside the line of off. Nitish Kumar not quite getting it out of the middle as he did the previous two. And a pretty simple catch by the fielder down at long off. That is, Nikhil, uh, my apologies, is Nicholas Curtin. And you see his reaction there, immediately pointing to the bowler, acknowledging the fact that he made the change that was needed. 
So you like that. Yeah, we see in the USA Cricket's uh, dugout area, bit of maybe nervousness because they know from where they are right now, things will be difficult. But who is at the wicket now? The man who won player of the match yesterday, it is Harmeet Singh. Harmeet Singh, who is a big hitter of the cricket ball. And importantly, that now means that there's two lefties at the crease. So bear in mind that the bowlers may not have to switch their lines, but they are bowling to two batters who can hit big. So pay attention to what happens here in the next 20 balls. So 12 runs off the silver so far, but you will have to make a, a precious trade-off that he's picked up the wicket of Nitesh Kumar. Still not done yet, 29 to win from 20 balls. Harmeet Singh joins Shadley Van Skokwik. We come down to the last 29 balls. 3-0 in the series so far for the US. We come down to this final T20 International here in Prairie View. Flicked into the onside. Good looking shot from Harmeet Singh. No, no, no! And they'll settle for one as Shadley Van Schokwik comes back into strike, Brian, with 28 to win. 28 to win, another 19 balls. So this one is coming down to the wire. It has to be said that Canada, of course, not able to win the series, but they're fighting to come out of the Prairie View series with something positive, something to write home about, something to take back with them to Toronto. And you know that they want to win this match with 19 balls remaining. So ball eased into the offside. That will complete the 17th over. So 17 gone. It's 142 for five. 27 from 18 balls. So we come down to the last three overs. Exciting 18 balls remaining, Brian. 27 still to win with two relatively new batters out in the middle, Harmeet Singh and Shali Van Shawquick. In theory, nine runs and over is not that difficult in modern cricket, but you emphasize the fact that there are now two new batters at the crease. Harmeet Singh, one from one. Shali Van Shawquick, eight from 10. And it's Harsh Thacker to bowl over number 18. It's a big appeal. He's gone. So another wicket goes down. The Canadians have struck again. And 27 to win from 17 balls. Six wicket down for the Americans. Tried the reverse sweep, Shadle Van Skalkvik. Wonder with nine and over needed instead of 19, whether or not he'd not be better off knocking that down the ground. But choosing to try to pierce that field, short third inside the circle. And I gotta say, looking at that replay, that is bang on target. That's probably hitting the top of middle and off. Shadley Van Skokvik missing out on that shot. Once you miss that delivery, that's that straight. It is going to always be difficult for you to not have the umpire a judge in the, the direction that he did. And we see on the replay again. Look at the reverse sweep. For me, that is hitting the back. That might be the top of middle, Lenny. Unfortunately for Shadlev and Skalkvik, I think that, that decision to play reverse sweep might have been terminal. So that is wicket number six. All kinds of trouble here now for the U.S. because you dismissed Shadlev and Skalkvik. And so now the two at the crease, Nisark Patel and Harmeet Singh Badan, have between the two of them faced one ball. And you're now needing to score nine and a half runs and over to win. So we've seen a very good bowling performance here from Harsh Takar, two for 16. Five. And he's, the, the off spinner's really been very good today. The Sark Patel comes to the middle, 27 to win from 17 balls, and here is the off spinner. <laughs> to the Sark, he wants a run, can score. This has been a tidy start to this over from. But a right-handed batter, so you do now have the element of the right-hander and left-hander crease at the same time. Down, down, down. One, one, one. Only one. So ball turned easily Lovely. into the onside. Harmeet Singh, who's had a brilliant day yesterday with the ball. Four for 18. 
finds himself 24 hours later, Brian, trying to win a match for the U.S. with 26 to win from 15 balls. Well, you mentioned a brilliant day with the ball, but he also had a brilliant day with the bat. When he batted Harmeet Singh, he had 34 from 17 with three fours and two sixes. So that type of an innings might be what's required from here for the U.S. to bring this last game home. One, one, very one, good down. bowling and performance in this over in particular here for Harsh Takar at a time in which something tight is needed. He picked up the wicket of uh, Shadley. He's followed up with a dot and a couple of singles. Still 25 to win from 14 balls. By the way, all I said after this ball. Get it, get it, get it. A number of friends watching my friend, somebody who you probably know, Ryan. Sahadeo, oh, yeah, who has sent. So we're down to the last 12 balls, 23 to win. Uday Bagwan Singh picked up the important wicket of Nitish Kumar, runs into ball to Harmeet Singh. And Singh is driving and driving well, will only get a single, and that equation comes down to 22 to win from, e from 11 balls, Brian. In these situations, Lenny, you want to have your best bowler bowl over number 19. What you're looking for is an over here that concedes no more than about seven, eight, nine runs because you want all of the pressure going into the last over to be on the batting side. Starting off here with just a single from the first ball, it is a brilliant start with the ball by Uday Bhagwan Singh. One for 24 from his 2.1 over so far, but importantly, he has to be able to bowl an over here that only concedes around maybe another five or six runs from the next five balls. So this arc Patel comes into strike, both batters out in the middle on three. We come down to the last 11 balls. Oh, that's a good strike from this arc Patel straight down the ground and goes for four. Brilliant strike. 51 on the board it brings up the 50 for the US and they're 18 runs away from another win. Brilliant strike down the ground. You might have just picked up on the stump, Mike. You heard at the non-striker's end. Where Harmeet Singh said, yes, boy, hammered straight. Look at that, straight as an arrow. Umpire Jermaine Lindo actually ducking to make sure he didn't get taken up by that ball. Great strike. And he, go he goes into the onside now. Settled for one, should have challenged him for a couple of runs there, Brian. 17 to win. 17 from nine. This equation gets more and more difficult. You want another boundary at least from this over. So your three delivers into over number 19. It is now Harmit Singh who is on strike. But what you want from Harmit Singh, who is a big hitter, who can hit big, he prefers the leg side. So there's a long on and there's a mid wicket. My sense is that that's the direction that he'll be aiming in. Well bowled here from Ude Bagwan Singh, but they're gonna squeeze a couple of runs. Good running. They come back for a couple of runs. Brings the equation down to 15 from eight balls. The server has gone for eight so far. Army Singh still on strike. That is great running. And you mentioned it, that's a great ball. What you're trying to do as a bowler, get that ball so full that the batter cannot get underneath it and elevate it. You know Harmit Singh wants to hit big, but that's a good delivery. But being able to squeeze two runs out of that, and importantly for the U.S. remaining on strike, because I think Harmit Singh is more likely to be the one of the pair to go big. Picked up and struck and struck well. This has gone for a maximum, and it's off the bat of Harmit Singh. That is what I was referring to. Harmeet Singh needs to be the one on strike because he is more likely to go big. Did not get this ball full enough. Uday Bhagwan Singh wants this to be a much, much fuller. Harmeet Singh gets it right in the slot and he absolutely drills it. That one strike might have changed the complexion of this entire game Sometimes. because now all they need is another nine runs from the next seven balls. So nine off seven, we've seen a 
massive hit here from uh, Paramit Singh, player of the match yesterday. Stroked into the offside, he will retain strike when play resumes. And so the last over will see the Americans need eight, eight to win, seven to level the scores. So it looks like Rishi Joshi has been given the final six. The Americans need eight. And with a win here, Brian, they'll go 4 0 in the series. But so much to play for in this last six balls. I mentioned that that 19 over usually goes to your best bowler. You're looking for him to bowl and over that only costs about eight, nine, or 10, maybe 10 runs at the most. But he cost 15 runs. Six of those 15 was from the fifth ball of over number eight of over number 19, which Harmeet Till drink Harmeet Singh drilled over wide long on for a six. The last six deliveries needing eight balls, I think, with six wickets in hand, that the Americans would fancy their chances from here, particularly with Harmeet Singh on strike. So Joshi won for 28 and three overs. He's gone. Gone a little bit over nine runs and over Brian. He's here to defend eight. It's 161 for six. The US they were batting at the, they were batting at nine for three. We saw 105 partnership with Nitish Kumar and who got 64. Corey Anderson got a half century, got 55. But it all comes down to the pair out in the middle and the man with ball in hand, Rashiv Joshi. Rashiv Joshi with the ball in hand, bowling over the wicket to the left-handed Harmeet Singh. He is a left-handed fast bowler, Rashiv Joshi. Now, note that the keeper, Srimantha Wijaratne, has come all the way down to talk to his bowler because it is absolutely important that you get these next six deliveries right. Matter of fact, if you don't get the first three right, it may not matter the rest of the way. Harmeet Singh is a big hitter of the cricket ball. For me, he's going over the wicket. I would not mind, Lenny, to see him go around the wicket to try to slant the ball across Harmeet Singh to force him to play on the offside because he's very strong, straight, and down the ground. So it is going to be critically important for Rashid Joshi to get the line of this delivery right. Choosing to go over the wicket the line has to be perfect. Lofted into the offside. Balls in front of back one sing, and it's a single to start the 20th over. Oh, this is a good start. You know Harmit Singh wants to go big. You know that he's lined up and waiting to get a ball to elevate under, but he gets this delivery just out of his hitting zone keeping that ball just wide enough that Harmeet Singh cannot go down the ground. So you definitely will take a single in this circumstance. Needing another seven from the last five is going to be difficult. And it is now up to Nisar Patel to either get a boundary or get a single or an odd number of runs to get Harmeet Singh back on strike. So we see Saad bin Zafar taking time between balls and why not, Brian? so much on his mind so much on how he marshals his personnel out in the middle seven runs to defend five balls here rishi joshi runs in from the com box oh nisar patel through the offside and that has gone away for four what a shot from this arch patel three to win oh my goodness that strike again changes the complexion of this entire game I mentioned he either needed an odd number of runs or he needed a boundary, but he does it himself. Goes through extra cover, lovely looking drive, proper cricket shot all along the ground, goes for four and brings the U.S. within three runs of victory with four balls remaining. So win for the U.S. will take them 4 nil in the series. Canada will, will head back to their country winless. Three to win, here is Joshi again to Nisar Patel. Flicked and flicked well towards square leg. 
And only a single and bring the equations down even closer <laughs> for another win here by the Americans. <laughs> One to tie, two to win. Harmit Singh on strike. Boy, you have to fancy your chances here as an American side that I think has been yes, staring down the barrel of a difficult situation for much of this match. But they've clawed and scratched their way back in. And now again, you sort of ha have to fancy your chances with Harmeet Singh on strike. Three balls remaining and just two more for victory. And the fact is, Brian, we saw the fifth ball in the last over from Uday Bagwan Singh that went for six. May have really tilted the balance and made it easier for the Americans in this last over. And then we saw the second ball that went for six. But here it is, two runs remaining. And he drives into the offside. And now the scores are leveled. 168 by Canada, 168 for six by the Americans. But still a couple of balls remaining. Scores are level, which means that the Americans cannot lose this game. So now all you need as an American team, if you're a supporter of the Americans, is to see a single of any flavor, whether it be wide, whether it be no ball, whether it be a single off the bat, a leg by, any flavor of single right now wins this game. So now look where the field is for Canada. You'll see everyone coming inside the circle looking to prevent that single. Everyone except for deep mid-wicket has come inside the circle. So now, obviously, their number one priority, Canada, is to prevent the single from being scored. So this bilateral series could end in this ball. Here is Rishiv Joshi, runs into ball two. The Sark Patel and the goal oh, goes down the leg side. And the Americans have won every single game that has been played this week between the USA and Canada team. In this bilateral series, the US remains unbeaten. Canada winless, it's all over. The Americans win. It is all over. I mentioned a run of any flavor. This one was actually a wide, an illegal delivery, a ball that the umpire thinks did not give the batter any a fair chance of being able to play a proper cricket shot. That is the definition of a wide. But big picture, that single or that wide means that the Americans win by the margin of four wickets. Absolutely brilliant chase by the Americans. And it does mean that Canada will make their trip back up north, having not won a single game in this series. There we will see the scorecard. Nitish Kumar, the second name on that list, top scoring for the U.S., 64 from 38. Corey Anderson batted really well as well, 55 from 48. And good contributions from Harmeet Singh and Nisarg Patel at the back end to take victory for the Americans. And again, for the bowlers, you, I think you'll see that generally they bowl decently. For me, the best of the bowlers might have been Harsh Thacker, four overs, two for 20. Sabin Zafar bowling inside the power play for the first time in a couple of games, two for 21. But a little bit more expensive, Rishiv Joshi, than he would like. And Ude Bhagwan Singh conceding 13 runs and over. Nikhil Dutta, 12 and over. So a good match overall, but the American just sneaking home at the end. Big picture. Again, in preparation for the World Cup later on this summer, the Americans win every single game that was able to be played in the series. And you'll see that they will be buoyed very much by their efforts here in Prairie View this weekend. Those light blue lines that will tell the story that the Americans, and again, watch that blue line, the light blue line, the worm stays on top. The light blue worm stays on top of the dark blue worm. And that tells you that the Americans did just enough. Wobbled a little bit, but did enough at the end to take victory here, Lenny. Uh, yes, uh, Brian, we saw a fighting 64. Very fluent from, um, from a man who has been playing for Canada for some time. So that's the math summary for you. Canada posting 168. Not enough. And the Americans winning by four wickets by a couple of balls to spare, Brian. Went all the way down, but... I just want to reflect back on uh, on the knock from uh, Nitesh Kumar, given a life at, at 11. He made them pay. And he got 64 along with um, Corey Anderson, who got a half century. And a 105-run partnership may have, may have done it for the United States. In the end, they win by four wickets.
mentioned a couple of times, Nitish Kumar, one of a handful of men who have played cricket for two different international teams. And he has supporters at the field today who would be very happy with the way things have turned out. So congratulations to him, congratulations to the Americans, and congratulations to the Prairie View Cricket Complex. Even though we did lose an entire match due to weather conditions on Wednesday, I think it's fair to say that the conditions for the last couple of days have been absolutely spectacular. Fantastic week of cricket. The Americans come out on top. Uh, yes, Brian, and also to the Canadians, hard luck. I'm pretty sure that they, they will bounce back. Not too sure what is their plan uh, heading into the World Cup. I know the, the U.S. will be hosting a Bangladesh in, a, in, in, in late May, and so at least the U.S. has another international series lined up. But um, hard luck to the Canadians, and uh, the U.S. really were superior in every department that we have seen during the course of this week. They bowled it well, they fielded well, and their batting really ca came off. Almost every game we saw a couple of half century from the USA batsmen. So it all augurs well as the US heads into a World Cup that they're hosting or co-hosting. I think this is exactly what the US wanted from this series they wanted to make sure that they got their side to have a run through on the cricket field they've not had very many t20s recently and they needed to play a competitive series against a decent canada side a canada side that i think will reflect on some of their bowling choices and some of their bowling d uh, strategies and certainly knowing that they're very top heavy in their batting they'll want to see if they can somehow stabilize and get more effort from the middle order but it's going to be an interesting world series world series world cup when it starts and all along stay tuned for all of the cricket this summer it's going to be an important cricket summer in the series or in the in the in the context of USA cricket stay tuned and the, by the way stay tuned for here right here at the Prairie View Cricket Complex for the post-match ceremonies. So we'll go silent for a few minutes, and then we will join Nikhil Utamchandani at the back end of this game for an absolutely thrilling end to a really well-played series, Lenny. 